knocking down one free throw after another after being fouled by the opposing team. And that is Pulse. Never raised that as a nine-year-old, this guy had this poise about him that allowed him to be this champion. And then the um, the coach went to his parents after he brought him back to win the game by two points when it was all said and done. And he went to the parents and said, you should know that I'm a sociology professor and that what we see in your son, they, we only see that in first responders and um, people who are firefighters and police officers. He said, and serial offenders. <laughs> and so, so what we're saying is that this is a guy that comes with a DNA that is prone for being able to come through in the clutch. And he, he has a mindset about him where he wants to be a champion. He knows what's required. He's willing to put the work in. From the neck up, he's incredibly intelligent. He understands emotional intelligence and then how to prepare himself in critical moments to be able to make the shot, to lead the team to victory. But at, you saw him get sacked nine times and keep getting up to throw three touchdowns against the number one seed Titans one year ago and still win the game. How many guys you know that can do that and stay that calm under pressure? I would say none, frankly, none. I mean, I see guys get up after getting hit. <laughs> right. I see guys that don't want to get hit, but nobody who gets yeah. up like nothing happened like this guy does. Solomon, to that point, though, what about yeah. the offensive line? Like, it was an issue, and then it was not an issue, but yeah. then it got banged up again last week. How big of a concern is that for you coming into this one, given the fact that you know Buffalo can get after the quarterback? Yeah, I think it, it, it's something that everyone needs to be concerned about. The first eight games of the season, uh, Joe Burrow was sacked 29 times and hit a whole lot more. And then over the last eight games, even through the last regular season game against the Ravens, he was only sacked 12 times when this offensive line was intact. Last week in the wild card game against the Baltimore Ravens, he was sacked four times. And you saw that offense kind of come to a crawl in the fourth quarter because the protection wasn't there. Joe Burrow... Um, gets rid of the ball very quickly. He understands it. I think only Tom Brady was better than he was uh, during the 2022 season at getting the ball out the quickest and the fastest to avoid getting those hits and getting the ball in the hands of his receivers. He's going to have to do plenty of that in Buffalo. So it remains to be seen, uh, Jim, how he can stretch the field and get the ball down the field to Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, and Tyler Boyd and really be able to threaten the second level of the field. Solomon Wilcox, my guest. Solomon, you mentioned Tom Brady. Listen, I mean, every athlete, very few get to go out on their own terms. We know this. But if anybody has deserved the right to go out when he wants or make that choice, it is Tom Brady. I'm just kind of curious, from where mm -hmm. you're sitting, when you watched him this year, what did you see? And would you like him to run it back one more time so he has a better ending? Or do you think he should walk off on it right now? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I kind of want to see more, but not more of what we saw this year. Mm. Um, I saw a guy who um, who was uh, stressed out. I saw a guy who seemed and looked very fatigued. I saw a guy that used to be able to carry a team when the ideal was less than perfect, and this year he could not. Scoring only 18 points per game, the offense at time was very anemic. I saw him in a wild card game against Dallas throw a red zone interception his first since the 2019 season, where he looked to be kind of chucking and ducking. He wanted to get rid of him, didn't want to get hit. And that's okay because none of us do. But we've never seen Tom Brady, <clears throat> excuse me, look this fragile. And look, maybe at a point where he can't carry the team anymore. And I don't know, after 23 years of playing, maybe that's his right. But he's always been able to do it, and that's become the bar of expectation that we have for Tom Brady. I think that's actually very well said. Now, Solomon, you co-host your pod with the iconic Pac-Man Jones. And as we know, Pac, man, he's a rare cat now, on the field and off. <laughs> What's it like to work with him on the pod? And I'm always curious about former athletes. Like, you've done this a long time, so you understand. <clears throat> but what's his approach and process like? Yeah. What's he bring to it? He brings a rawness to it, right? This raw feel of a guy who's played it, who's been there and done that. And he was a fearless. What I loved about him, he was fearless. He never would fair catch a punt. This guy didn't care how many bullets was flying at him. He could go in that room, stare down the barrel. And that's what people love about him. There's an authenticity about Adam Pac-Man Jones that we here in Cincinnati, which is a really conservative community, Jim, to be honest with you, 
But we love Adam Pac-Man Jones because he gives it to you real. Uh, this is a guy that when he played, didn't do everything right, but he has a heart that he'll come and tell you that he loves you. He wants you to love him. And then he's going to go back to doing the things that he's always done with the kind of swagger, the kind of bravado, in an unapologetic way. And that's what we kind of love about him. And when we're doing the pod, I told him, I said, look, I don't want another guy like me who's a traditional podcaster or a traditional broadcaster in any way, shape, or form. I need someone who's the antithesis of me uh, and someone who's going to give us something different. And I think that we have a unique blend in the podcast where I'm giving you something that maybe what people want, what they expect, and he's giving you something that maybe you didn't expect, but you end up loving anyway. And so in that sense, we think we have something very unique as a brand. No, I think you're right. You, you cannot replicate or duplicate who and what he is. He's unbelievable, and I agree with you. I love the guy. Right. He is so raw and so real. So, Solomon, really quickly, you addressed this question. You're going to be biased, of course, but if you had to start a franchise, and they're both amazing quarterbacks, who do you start with, Joe or Josh? Wow, that's a good one because I love, I love what Josh Allen is bringing to the table. This guy's 6'5", 250. He can run you over as a quarterback or hurdle you, and we've seen him do it. Um, since 2021, he has the most deep passing yards than any other quarterback, and he has uh, 55 uh, times where he's rushed for a first down and seven times where he's run for a touchdown on a third down play. So he knows how to convert down inside the red zone when running, and he knows how to make plays throwing the ball down the field. Now, Joe Burrow has the most uh, deep passing touchdowns in any quarterback since 2021. These guys are so closely linked. But I think Joe Burrow, for me, he has those intangibles that at clutch times, in the clutch, he's going to beat you. And I, I still tell you, the Rams, that trophy would be ours if we could block Aaron Donald for one more second. Because Jamar Chase is still open, Jim. I'm telling you right now. All day. Joe's going to make the plays. He's going to make the plays. There's no doubt about it. We have the utmost confidence in him. Um, he has that intangible that the great ones have. That you got to, he's going to die with his boots on. And it's going to take everything you got in order to beat him. I like those intangibles, even though we love and marvel at the talent of Josh Allen. Hey, Solomon, really quickly, you and I are the same age and from the same generation. Joe Burrow, he's got some of that Joe Montana, doesn't he? That same, that's what we're talking about here. Yeah. Yeah, because think about it. When Joe Montana played, who were the real great talented quarterbacks? I would argue Dan Marino was more talented. For sure. I would argue that John Elway, John, you know, I grew up in L.A., nearby where you're at right now, and when he was at Granada, we would take the bus from Compton. To go all the way up to Granada Hills to watch John Elway play. He was he was that magnificent. And Joe Montana didn't have their talent, but they didn't have his it factor. The ability to finish off drives by getting the ball into the end zone. Mm. Joe Montana had that in spades. He had it when he was at Notre Dame. He had it for all those years he was... In San Francisco, he even took some of it with him to Kansas, Kansas City. Kansas City, he did. I agree with you, Solomon. I got to jump in because that's how you close this show right there. A former NFL safety, he is the co-host of the opening drive on Sirius XM NFL Radio and the co-host of Believe in Bengals podcast with Pac-Man Jones. Solomon, great job. So good to have you on. Really appreciate you. An amazing job. For the ones who get it done, Granger is offering supplies and solutions for every industry as well as access to product experts ready to answer your toughest questions. Call or click Granger.com or stop on by. Like I say sometimes, that's how you close a show. Solomon Wilcox. Frank Schwab came on. Jim Rum's Big Head Bet's coming up shortly. Look for that. See you. We're out. Individual rates, coverage, offerings, and savings may vary. Subject to terms and conditions not available in all areas. Hey, small business owner, when's the last time you checked your workers' comp rate? For many small businesses, workers' comp insurance is one of their biggest costs. But some don't check their rate often. Did you know rates can vary? In fact, taking three minutes to check your rate with Pi Insurance could save you up to 30%. Just go to IWantPie.com, share a few details about your business, and get a quote that's customized for you with no hassle or hidden fees. We know you're busy, but spending just a few minutes to check your rate could save you money. 
Plus, when you sign up for pay-as-you-go billing, your premium is based on your actual payroll, not an estimate. So your workers' comp audit experience is simplified. See how much you could save with Pi Insurance. Ask your agent for Pi or get a quote at IWantPi.com. That's IWantPie.com. If you missed the Brian Bailey Show, you missed. 2019 National League Manager of the Year from the St. Louis Cardinals, Mike Schilt. Okay, now you're the senior advisor to the general manager with the Padres. What exactly does that entail? Well, a little bit of everything, Brian. Last year, I was a little bit more on the field. Bob Melvin, the current manager, he really encouraged for me to be on the field with the, with the club. And I coached in third. You know, I was like the utility coach. So I'll, I'll be on the field, you know, probably seven to ten games a month. Um, and then we get towards September, I'll probably – be with the club on a daily basis. Tune in Mondays at noon for the Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities, right here on Pirate Radio. UBE and PirateWear.com is excited to offer Pirate Nation the largest selection of new ECU merchandise and tailgate supplies ever. UBE has the best prices in town, so that makes UBE your one-stop shop for all things ECU. UBE does daily restocks of Champion, Adidas, and Under Armour. Don't forget to bring your young pirates in to plunder the Crow's Nest, which is the only kid store dedicated to ECU. Plenty of free parking uptown in Greenville. Visit them at PirateWear.com. Go Pirates! Flight by Yingling. It's the next generation of light beer. For those who don't follow trends, but craft them. Flight by Yingling is 12 ounces of uncompromised refreshment from America's oldest brewery. With only 2.6 grams of carbs and 95 calories, this is premium refreshment, six generations in the making. Don't just raise a glass, raise the bar. Flight by Yingling. Available wherever beer is sold. DG Yingling and Sun Incorporated. Pottsville, Pennsylvania. Please enjoy responsibly. I'm Sam Jones, and for more than three generations, my folks have kept the fires burning for Eastern North Carolina whole hog barbecue. At Sam Jones, you'll find our smokehouse pumping out wood-fired meats cooked fresh every single day. There are no freezers at our place. Everything, and we mean everything, is made fresh daily, including our sides, sweets, and sauces. Stop in and see us, and I bet you'll be able to taste our passion in just one bite. At Sam Jones Barbecue, you'll find plenty of smoke, but no mirrors. I'm Donald Stocks, owner of Pip Marketing Science Print. We are your one-stop shop for just about anything printed. If we're not your go-to printer, please give us a call at 355-1636. We have over 80 five-star Google reviews and want you to be our next more than satisfied and well-pleased customer. Check us out at growitpip.com or stop in to see us at 3185 Mosley Drive in Greenville. Pip where business goes to grow. Greenville's newest sports bar is officially open. Coco Sports Bar, located in the old Professor O'Cool's location right off of Greenville Boulevard, has daily specials, including $2.50 aluminum bottles on Tuesdays and $1 wings on Wednesdays. Along with their great food, Coco's has great entertainment for you and the crew to enjoy with karaoke on Thursdays, a live DJ on Fridays, and live music every Saturday night. Check out Coco Sports Bar on Facebook for the latest information on menu items, drink and lunch specials, and more. Go Pirates! Hey, Pirate Nation, this is Amanda Houston. And when it came time to make the game-winning play for relaxation at our house, I made the right call to Jamie Lang and Carolina Hardscapes. Jamie and his team built the backyard oasis of our dreams with a beautiful custom paver patio, outdoor lighting, and fireplace. Make your backyard incredible and call Carolina Hardscapes today at 364-1201 or visit their showroom on Fire Tower Road across from Bostick Suck. Go Pirates! If you missed Pirate Radio Live, you missed. That is the, like, 4.30-ish Sunday game. Yeah, I, I'd still like the Giants. That might be the one that I would whiff on. I stand corrected, Clip. <laughs> <laughs> I just interrupted the conversation. I'm sorry. I Most, apologize. Uh, what do you I got, apologize. Shirley? I'm sorry. Let's go back to Shirley Rhodes at the Canadian uh, breaking, breaking news <laughs> out of Canada. <laughs> eh? Tyler Sneed did sign with the Montreal Alouettes. Let's he go. signed yesterday and has been added to Man. the active roster. Whew, I can breathe again. <laughs> Pirate Radio Live, weekdays from 3 to 6, right here on Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, 1250 at 92.7 FM Greenville, WDLX Washington, 930 at 104.1 FM Washington. 
Can you be quiet, please? Thank you. Welcome to Pirate Radio Live. I just think we were prepared. You know, one thing my, uh, my trainer, he told me, he said, what did he say? He just told us to be prepared. <sighs> All right. Hi. 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 I want me some glory hope. Dude. You ain't Moss. I'm the boss. Pocahontas. Is it me, Amanda Garcia? <laughs> Uh, hey, uh, 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 I'm sorry. Uh, all right. Uh, um, uh, uh. How about those friggin' pirates? Now live from the Pirate Radio Studios in the heart of the Pirate Nation, here is your host, Clip Brock. Welcome in to a Thursday edition of Pirate Radio Live. Clip Brock here inside the Pirate Radio Studios. Coming to you today on Pirate Radio 92.7 FM in Greenville, 104.1 in Washington. You can find us on 1250, 930, online, PR927FM.com. And watch the show and be a part of the show on Facebook Live and YouTube. Make sure you are subscribed to Pirate Radio TV on YouTube. Give us a like there. Give us a like and follow on Facebook and follow us on Twitter, Instagram as well for all the latest breaking news regarding the Pirate Nation. Pirate Nation, a big announcement upcoming in moments. First, let me set up today's program. Big baseball show. We'll talk to Ryan Meadows coming up in the 4 o'clock hour. Got the Down East Pitching and Catching Camp coming up and some big names going to be in Eastern North Carolina. Uh, helping out your kids and, and be involved in baseball. And uh, we'll talk to Ryan Meadows all about that coming up in the 4 o'clock hour. The hottest game show, Sweeping the Nation, Name That Sound, returns today in the 4 o'clock hour. Shirley Rhodes has cooked up another game for Chandler and I. That's coming up later on in today's program. Former Pirate and current St. Louis Cardinal Alec Burleson will join us coming up at 5 o'clock. He will be speaking at the ECU Baseball Banquet next weekend. And Burley will join us to talk about his first taste of Major League Baseball, what he's up to now. Uh, Remember some of his glory days at East Carolina. And uh, it'll be great to catch up with Alec Burleson coming up at 5 o'clock. And also in the 5 o'clock hour, Brett Kennedy, WCTI 12, will join us to talk about area sports. We'll talk some Pirate Hoops as well as his Kansas City Chiefs getting ready for the Jaguars. On Saturday, we'll have all the wild card, the divisional round action coming up this weekend, Saturday, Sunday, right here on Pirate Radio. Shirley Rhodes is here. Chandler Honeycutt is here. Troy D and Ellerby are here, and anytime you get Troy D and Ellerby at the same table at the top of a show, that means there's a big announcement to make. Or some desserts in the building. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see any desserts, so yes. I did have a Girl Scout cookie earlier today that was provided. And a banana friends. pudding. We saw that, but that's yeah. not the big announcement, <laughs> that's Troy not, D. That's Let's not, not get distracted. That's just regular news. That's Pe- not big enough. People have pulled over to the side yeah. of the road to hear this, Troy All D. right, let's get straight to it. Uh, this, you know, Now in our 20th year here at Pirate Radio, we've been able to do a lot of cool events over the years and uh, talk to a lot of great people. I am very excited to announce that uh, coming up in early April that uh, we are going to be bringing one of the absolute legends of professional baseball into town for a dinner with Dale Murphy. We're bringing Dale Murphy to Greenville, North Carolina, as we are going to uh, be having an event with him, actually multiple events with him here in Greenville. And we're going to be talking to Dale in just a few minutes on the program about this. And if you're an Atlanta Braves fan, you know Dale well. Even if you're not an Atlanta Braves fan, you probably know Dale well. Yeah, Dale Murphy, a living legend, uh, played so many years for the Atlanta Braves, uh, was a two-time National League MVP was a seven-time all-star and just really an all-around great person and uh, a hero of mine growing up. I mean, anybody that grew up in North Carolina or in the Southeast definitely watched the Braves on TBS, and Dale Murphy was a staple, just one of those guys drafted by the Braves and uh, was in their system for so long. Finished his career with the Phillies and and the Rockies for a little bit, but uh, super excited that on Sunday, April 2nd, Dale Murphy is going to be coming to Greenville. We're putting together an event where you can have a chance to meet him, uh, get a picture with him, hear him talk about his career, his leadership, and uh, so many other 
great things. Uh, I, I mean, this is, I mean, just from interacting with him behind the scenes the last couple of weeks, I mean, he is the exact person that uh, I grew up loving as a kid and uh, just a, just an all around great person. And I can't wait to have him come to Greenville and uh, speak to all the folks in Eastern North Carolina. Dale's a class act on and off the field. And this is one of those events. Some of the, our last event we did was a private event, not open to the public. Uh, this is something that we are going to open up to the public. So we're announcing for the first time individual tickets will be available and table sponsorships will be available and we're going to try and make it as affordable as possible for folks we're also going to be donating a chunk of the proceeds to the ecu baseball restricted fund and other youth organizations in greenville so we're really excited about bringing dale murphy a living legend to greenville north carolina for your chance to uh meet and interact with him get a picture and uh, i think it'll be a, a, a event that will probably sell out pretty quickly is my guess absolutely uh so we'll have all the contact information and details in just a minute but uh clipper we had a chance earlier to talk to uh dale murphy and uh it, it was an absolute treat you gonna hear it right now yeah let's uh, let's go to the, let's go to the interview with uh dale murphy shirley all right really excited to introduce our next guest here on the pirate radio live line it's going to be a fun day on sunday april the 2nd when uh, we welcome a two-time national league mvp a seven-time Major League Baseball All-Star. He is now a motivational speaker. He is a guy that many of us looked up to growing up in the 80s playing for the Atlanta Braves. He is Dale Murphy. Uh, Dale Murphy, excited to have you come visit us in Greenville, but excited to talk to you right now. Welcome to Pirate Radio. Well, thank you so much. Really, really looking forward to getting out there. And, uh, you know, Braves Braves country goes uh, all over. And I know uh, North Carolina is Braves country. And uh, so... Looking forward to coming to Greenville. Can't wait. Thank you. You were just such an icon uh, playing for the Braves. And the way the the Major League Baseball was structured in the 80s where TBS would show your games, you all kind of had that piped in all over the southeast. Uh, it's just uh, re- really, really cool. I think that uh, you're kind of going around and uh, you've kind of turned your career and your life to, to telling stories and being a motivational speaker. But uh, just get up to speed. What, what has Dale Murphy been up to uh, the last uh, 15, 20, 30 years? Oh, wow. I can't believe it's been that long, <laughs> but it has. Uh, well, we have uh, we have uh, 15 grandkids, and uh, so that keeps us busy. Uh, Braves fans are kind of shocked when, well, it's, it's, it's been going on a few years now uh, uh, since we've had uh, uh, grandchildren, but to hear that Murph's a grandpa. But, uh, you know, that... Uh, family things um and i got a few things going on i love to speak uh as you mentioned i got uh, a restaurant in uh in in uh atlanta called murph's by the ballpark and uh you know we're just i'm just you know trying to stay busy trying to to uh you know get out there i love to talk you know uh about what i learned from my career and um and you mentioned tbs i mean it was really a unique time uh, for, for the Braves and for baseball. And, uh, it was just, you know, just really, uh, the, you know, the longer I get away from it, it seems like the, the more I appreciate it. It's, 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 you know, I always appreciate it when I played, but you know, as time moves on, you look back and you, you say, man, we were pretty lucky. Dale, great to have you with us. This is Troy. Uh, you know, you bring back a lot of memories when you talk uh, and you mention the name Dale Murphy and you talk about WTBS. If you grew up in the 80s like me and Ellerby did, you know, it isn't the kids. The, my kids nowadays have no appreciation. Uh, they've got everything at their fingertips, every type of entertainment and every type of channel and uh, everything's online. It, as you know, Dale, it wasn't like that back then. You know, you had a, uh, just a handful of channels. You could count them on one hand probably. And when cable came out, it was a new thing. It was cutting edge. It was the Internet of the day, if you want to look at it that way. And WTBS was one of those few stations that was in everybody's home that had cable. And I think the only other thing close was WGN. The Cubs had a deal with WGN. Uh, The Braves had a deal with WTBS. And it put you guys on a national platform more than any other team in the country. And, of course, 
at the time, you know, Atlanta, the closest team here in North Carolina, you've got Braves fans all over. But uh, I think really people that lived in North Carolina consider Braves their team. And I remember growing up in the 80s, I'd be, posters were a big thing then. I remember, and I bet Jonathan Ellerby had one of these, a Dale Murphy poster, you know, with you at the plate with your name underneath it. Those were kind of iconic images. So to be able to have you in Greenville is going to be very exciting. When you look back at your career, Dale, what are some of those, uh, what are some of your favorite memories? When you when you go back now and still kind of iconic legend in Atlanta, I know they still love you there, but as I said, you got Brave fans listening uh, all over when, when you think back to your career what do you remember the most well you know you look back you always remember the good times <laughs> you should try even you know baseball's a game of you know if you strike out a few times you try to forget as soon as possible so uh i, I look back i look back you know 82 83 84 really uh those were our competitive years um, a lot of fun, got some excitement going in Atlanta. Obviously, 82, where we won our first 13 in a row, was unexpected. Uh, you know, along with the TBS thing, uh, Ted Ted put together the idea that he was going to film us all through the year and make a behind-the-scenes documentary. And, uh, you know, people remember that. I think it was called uh, It's a Long Way to October. They won an Emmy. I mean, it was kind of the first, as I it, that I, you know, can remember, one of the first behind the scenes, uh, following uh, a team, you know, throughout the whole year, and so everything was kind of new. You know, Ted didn't invent the satellite, uh, but he he did invent, you know, content for the TV station that he bought. He's, you know, he he, he that's why that's why he put us on. He was just looking for content. You know, I remember when we weren't playing that well, uh, we got bumped from the 7.30 slot to 5.30 uh, on Wednesday uh, home games. And we were all like, Ted, why are we starting at 5.30? He says, well, I got a pretty highly rated mo- movie coming on at 7.30. You guys got to play better and you can get back into prime time. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned Ted Turner, uh, Dale. Who are some of the other uh, people that uh, from your playing days that uh, had an impact on you or uh, just kind of stood out? Well, Phil Necro is the first one that comes to mind. Uh, you know, when I was a rookie, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm watching Phil, how he handled himself, how he went about his career. Um, and I think, uh, you know, Phil made a great impact on me. Gary Matthews had a had a great impact on me. He got traded early in my career uh, to the Phillies and then ended up with the Cubs and had some great success there. But early on, uh, Gary Matthews is a guy, me and Bob Horner talk about him, uh, you know, the impact he had. He was, uh, we were kind of, you know, young rookies trying to learn how to play the game. And, and I loved uh, talking with Gary on how to play. Uh, Glenn Hubbard, Bruce Benedict, still in touch with those guys. And, uh, you know, have dinner with Bob Horner. Well, he, where, whenever we get together, uh, saw him a few months ago. And, and, uh, you, Chris Shambliss is in the Atlanta area. I mean, I could go on and, uh, you know, just, you know, it was just a great, great time of life. Uh, you know, we're young playing ball. I mean, you know, what could, uh, you know, what could go wrong, but, uh, you know, had some successes, <laughs> had some things that didn't work out too well, but, you know, overall, just great memories. Dale, we got, uh, you know, such an incredible career uh, in baseball. Of course, a lot of folks will remember you uh, with the Braves and in the outfield. But I was reading up, and I, you know, I saw you've, you've been a catcher before. You've been a first baseman before. What You've played a lot of different positions. What were your favorite ones? Uh, and if you had to pick one, which one would it be? Well, I was drafted as a catcher. And, uh, you know, catching, is, you know, Definitely uh, tough on the body. Career probably would have been shortened had I had I kept doing it. But uh, I don't think there's any question that catching is is, is it's like the quarterback, um, and you're out there all the time, uh, as opposed to pitching, which I think is great. But you know, you're out there. You're only out there every four or five days. So uh, I love to catch. You know, it just didn't work out there. First base didn't work out there. Obviously, I, I took to the outfield, but. You know, if I had to pin it down, um, it would have been fun to, to have been a, a, a catcher full-time. I just, you know, couldn't cut it, and Bobby Cox moved me to the outfield where I found a home. But there's really something about working with a pitcher. 
you know, uh, you know, figuring out together, you're on that communication level of what you're going to pitch and what you're, what he's going to throw. Uh, you're, you're trying to, you know, think along it, you know, with him. And there's just a great feeling of, of satisfaction when you're catching. Uh, and then you can contribute defensively, uh, like no one else. You just have such a big impact on the game day in and day out. Dale, you had such a great career with, with the Braves and, uh, of course, played with the Phillies and Rockies, too. When you look back on it and you played at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium and now you have a restaurant at, at Truist Park, uh, what, what do you think of where where Major League Baseball used to be in the 80s with all these ballparks that are pretty much demolished now to all these new fancy facilities like Truist Park in Atlanta? Would Dale Murphy like to be playing in today's game with uh, these nice facilities? <laughs> You know, that's an interesting question, the nice facilities. You know, people ask me, what's, there's a lot of differences between, you know, uh, 30, 40 years ago and now, obviously. In, in anything we do, there's going to be a lot of differences with that span of time. But one of the first things I think of is the field. I mean, you know, let's just be honest. That it was a great place to hit, Atlanta Fulton County Stadium, but we, we just, you know, groundskeepers didn't have the technology they have now. And uh, so it was. It was not always uh, um, level. I guess is the best way to put it. Didn't drain that well, you know. With all the rain in Atlanta, you know, we'd still we'd play through puddles of water out there. Uh, these ballparks now have drainage systems that are un- unreal. Um, and and I'll tell you, there's not very many bad hops. I mean, they, they, these fields are so good now. I, w- I would love to have played on it, but I'll tell you. And I'll probably talk about this when I when I uh, get there to Greenville. Um, you know, it's in in a lot of ways I think it's tougher to hit now. And uh, so I don't know. I think I play. Yeah, you know, I I think everybody kind of plays in the generation that you know that that they were right for. And so uh, I don't know. These these kids now are incredible athletes. They're doing things that you know that we couldn't do. Talking to Dale Murphy, he'll join us here in Greenville for an event. We'll give you the details on that coming up in a little bit. Uh, but, Dale, you know, baseball is still baseball over the years and decades, but there have been a lot of rule changes. There's been technology coming to play. What do you like now? What do you dislike now about the game versus when you played? Well, um, that's a, a, a great conversation and a long one. I'll sum it up now, and, again, we can talk about it more when I get there. Uh, but I think everybody recognized was one of the big challenges is the length of the game, uh, as far as viewership is concerned and experience at the ballpark. Um, I think we're, I, I, I'm not sure what we're averaging, maybe two hours and 50 minutes, close to three. Um, we, I think some of the rules changes are going to help that. And, uh, and, you know, I, I got some opinions on, on technology. I think some of the things are good. And information is good, but, you know, I always kind of ask myself the question, you know, just because you measure it, can, is, is it going to have a good impact on the game? And I think some of the things have had a negative impact. I think uh, being able to, and I'll just give you one example, uh, just being able to measure launch angle and things off the bat, I think it's created a, a generation that is thinking too much about getting the ball in the air, and as a result, we have more strikeouts. And as a result, we have longer games and fewer balls in play. And that's a, that's a, to me, that's a problem. Now, these guys are great athletes, but, uh, you know, some of their, they're measuring things that I'm not so sure applying them to the game has benefited the viewer experience. I'll put it that way. He is Dale Murphy. He is coming to Greenville. North Carolina on Sunday, the April 2nd, and you can be a part of a dinner with Dale Murphy. We're going to have an event at the Murphy Center, not named after you, Dale Murphy, but uh, <laughs> but it is the Murphy Center on the campus of East Carolina campus, uh, on East Carolina Athletic Campus uh, that night. People can buy a table. There's going to be an opportunity to do a meet and greet uh, with Dale Murphy, and uh, it's going to be exciting. Just that topic you kind of touched on there, but uh, what other things do you like to talk about now as a, as a motivational speaker? speaker that uh, can give some insight for uh, folks that uh, are going to be interested in coming to hear you and, and meet you? Well, I'd love to talk about what I learned, you know, from my career. And uh, you mentioned catching, you know, a lot of people forget that, uh, and I'm, I'm thankful they do, uh, uh, 
my my career path was not very straight. Uh, you know what I mean? I, I drafted and then go to the minor leagues and then go to the big leagues and you know have some success. It just it wasn't a very straight path. I kind of took some detours and I like to share what I learned from that uh, changing positions and and why I had to change positions. And uh, you know I think the, the one of the things I love to talk about baseball is that it's it, you know we play 162 games. So it is kind of an everyday experience. And I think you think about sports and life and analogies. I think baseball is a great sport to talk about the challenges we all face with, you know, getting up every day and, and, and facing the challenges we have. And how do you face those challenges? What's your mindset? What, what are you going to do about yesterday that, that you know, well stunk? You know, it, it wasn't very good. And, uh, so being able to overcome those kind of things and and apply it to baseball and then I, I I I hope I could give people some some hope that things are going to work out for them with the challenges they face in life because because you can overcome it you can do it you just keep plugging away and I I like to share mostly I like to share you know what I learned from my career and then I think we're going to have a Q and A so people can. You know, can ask me anything they want, and uh, we'll talk about. I'm sure we'll talk about today's game, technology, and and uh, you know the state of baseball right now. Dale, it's gonna be awesome. I know uh, we only have a limited number of uh, seats and tickets available, so I'm sure this thing's gonna sell out. But uh, this is gonna be really exciting to have you here in Greenville and to uh, hear those things, hear your story, and for folks to be able to interact with you, have uh, questions and uh, pictures, and uh, it's it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'll leave you with this story before we go. This is a true story. Jonathan and I's sons both were teammates on a baseball team last year for their middle school. Uh, they both played at uh, Epps Middle School, and my son was one of the. I think uh, Hunter was the first base. Uh, Tyler, my son, was in the outfield, and uh, he, he made some great catches during the uh, during the season. I remember the coach came up to me about midseason after a game. He said, boy, Tyler's a regular Dale Murphy out there. And I said, man, that is some high praise right there. I said, I, I'm going to tell Tyler that. He won't maybe understand what an outstanding compliment that is, but I'm going to ex- educate him a little bit on how what a great honor that was to be compared to Dale Murphy. And uh, oh. now for him to be able to meet you coming up, up uh, in April is going to be really cool when I told him about this. Well, thanks for sharing that. That's great. Look forward to meeting him. Look forward to look forward to getting there. And and uh, um, you know, I'm I'm excited. I appreciate the opportunity. So so we're going to have some fun. Dale, thank you so much for your time today. And uh, all of Pirate Nation in Eastern North Carolina will look forward to meeting you on Sunday, April second. Great. Thank you. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Dale. Troy D, Ellerby, and Dale Murphy, who will be coming to Greenville coming up in April, April 2nd, dinner with Dale Murphy. Let's uh, get a break in, guys. We'll come back and give more details on dinner with Dale Murphy. Uh, Dale Murphy coming to town. Take a break. Come back. More to go. Pirate Radio Live. Back with you after this. New you, new Papa Bites. Chicken par, jalapeno, and Oreo cookie Papa Bites. Just in time for those New Year's resolutions, huh? <laughs> Don't worry, we won't tell anyone. Hey, Pirate fans, Papa John's is the MVP move for game day or any day. Place your order online at papajohns.com and sign up for Papa Rewards. Papa John's, better ingredients, better pizza. Go Pirates! Russell's Clothing in downtown Washington is celebrating 40 years in business. That means big savings for you on your favorite men's and women's clothing and accessories. As you would expect, Rhonda has slashed prices 40% on select merchandise. Outerwear, slacks, assorted sportswear, and shoes for the men. Dresses, sweaters, blouses, and outerwear for the ladies. Celebrate 40 years with us and save 40% while it lasts. We're here because of you, and we thank you, our friends and customers at Russell's Clothing in downtown Washington. Your vehicle is a big part of your life. That's why you should trust the team at Greenville Auto World for all your vehicle needs. Greenville Auto World believes in fair prices, superior service, and treating customers right. Visit GreenvilleAutoWorld.net to see their fully stocked inventory of SUVs, trucks, and cars. Need a lift kit, custom rims, or wheels? Greenville Auto World can upgrade your vehicle today. For sales or service, visit Greenville Auto World on Highway 43 in Greenville. 
Are you looking for a home loan? Look no further than Amy Goss at Guild Mortgage. Since 1960, Guild Mortgage has partnered with industry professionals to close loans on time and help millions of Americans realize their dreams. Call Amy Goss at Guild Mortgage in Jacksonville, 910-389-4602. Amy Goss is licensed in Florida, Georgia, Maine, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Virginia. Guild Mortgage Company, Equal Housing Opportunity, NMLS 3274. NMLSconsumeraccess.org forward slash for licensing information. Please visit guildmortgage.com forward slash licensing. Guild Mortgage is not affiliated with Pirate Radio. For the latest from the world of golf, tune in every Saturday morning from 8 to 10 for the Golf Shop Radio Show, presented by PlayGolfMyrtleBeach.com, the golf capital of the world. Hosts Mark Greenhelch and Matt Blanchard talk golf from tee to green and everything in between. If you like golf, you're going to love Golf Shop Radio. Before you tee up, drop on in. Welcome to the Golf Shop. With over 30 locations across North Carolina and southeastern Virginia, Quality Equipment is your local John Deere dealer where you'll find everything you need for your next project. Our complete lineup of John Deere lawn and garden, agricultural and commercial worksite equipment comes with years of experience, expertise and dedication. We know what it takes to get it done right. Stop by today or visit us online at qualityequip.com. Familia on Fire Tower Road in Winterville has a brand new updated menu. Open from 4 to 9 Tuesday through Saturday and 11 to 9 on Sundays, Familia has a variety of pizza combinations and classic Italian dishes that are sure to tackle your taste buds. Enjoy Thirsty Thursdays with $3 drafts with several local brews on tap. And who doesn't love brunch? Familia has Sunday brunch from 11 to 2. Follow Familia on social media for their pizza of the week for just 12 bucks. Visit online at FamiliaNC.com. Familia, that's Italian for family. UBE and PirateWear.com is excited to offer Pirate Nation the largest selection of new ECU merchandise and tailgate supplies ever. UBE has the best prices in town, so that makes UBE your one-stop shop for all things ECU. UBE does daily restocks of Champion, Adidas, and Under Armour. Don't forget to bring your young pirates in to plunder the Crow's Nest, which is the only kid's store dedicated to ECU. Plenty of free parking uptown in Greenville. Visit them at PirateWear.com. Go Pirates! This is Coach Steve Shankweiler, offensive line coach for East Carolina University football. And you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to Hour One of Pirate Radio Live. This hour is brought to you by University PC Care, your local tech support experts for all your personal and business needs. Visit universitypccare.com to learn more today. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Grab your amigos and head to Chico's for the best Mexican food and fun in Greenville. Come and enjoy favorites like shrimp tacos, steak and chicken fajitas, burritos, enchiladas, ACP, and more. Follow Chico's on Facebook and Instagram for daily updates. For Mexican food and fun, it's got to be Chico's for dine-in or to go. Now let's head back into PRL. Here's Clip. All right, back with you here on Pirate Radio Live. A lot of baseball talk going on today. Ryan Meadows is going to join us to talk about the Down East Baseball pitching and catching camp coming up and all the big names that will be a part of that. Alec Burleson, former Pirate, current St. Louis Cardinal, will join us at 5 o'clock. We'll also talk some ECU athletics, local sports, and more with Brett Kennedy, WCTI 12. And we're going to play Name That Sound in hour number two. So a big edition of Pirate Radio Live. And it's already been a big edition because in the first segment you heard from Braves legend Dale Murphy as he will be coming to Greenville, North Carolina. Troy D. and Ellery uh, talked to Dale. And uh, looking forward to seeing the former Brave and Greenville guys. It's going to be fun. we got a couple events planned. We're going to do um, a dinner, what we're calling Dinner with Dale Murphy at the Murphy Center, starting at 5 o'clock Sunday, April 2nd. Uh, these tickets are available to the public and also table sponsorships available. Elbury, I'll let you get into the details in a second with the table sponsorship, but uh, also individual tickets. But folks that do sponsor a table will have an opportunity to attend a um, private VIP meet and greet at tiebreakers earlier that day which we're going to actually take over tiebreakers it'll be closed to the public for this day old event and uh, i think that's going to be really cool too where folks uh, that's going to kind of be a really private exclusive deal a chance to be one-on-one with dale have some time to talk and get photographs and 
um, folks that are table sponsors with us will have tickets to that we are not selling tickets separately to the uh, to the meet and greet but we are providing that to uh, folks that buy a table yeah so a couple ways uh, you can get involved and uh, join us for the dinner with dale murphy uh, which is going to be at the murphy center as you mentioned from 5 to 6 30 on sunday april 2nd so uh if you buy a table sponsorship it's going to be 800 dollars. you'll get eight tickets to the dinner with dale murphy at the murphy center it's so repetitive. Keep saying that the Murphys. Yep. It, 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 I, I never really put two and two together until we just interviewed him a little while ago. But uh, so you get eight tickets to the event for eight hundred dollars. You'll also get one autographed baseball by Dale Murphy. So if you sponsor a table, you'll uh, get an autographed baseball, and then you'll get four tickets to the VIP meet and greet, which will be at Tiebreakers from uh, one thirty to three thirty that Sunday afternoon. The cool thing that's opening weekend of Major League Baseball. We're going to have the Braves and National games on uh, that afternoon. We'll also probably have the East Carolina. Baseball baseball game on they'll be at houston mm-hmm. that weekend so the the pirates are out of town that weekend but uh we'll, we'll be watching major league baseball the braves and nationals with dale murphy at tiebreakers from 1 30 to 3 30 it'll be a, a smaller private event it's a great opportunity for you to uh talk to dale get some pictures with him and uh, just kind of casually hang out and uh enjoy a living legend in greenville north carolina so for 800 dollars, you'll get uh, all of that you'll get uh, eight tickets to the dinner that sunday night you'll get four tickets to the vip event event at tiebreakers plus an autographed baseball if you just want to buy an individual ticket if you just want to come to the dinner with dale murphy at the murphy center those tickets are going to be 150 dollars it'll include your your dinner that night it'll also include some photo opportunities uh dale is going to do a, a great speech and talk about as he mentioned in the interview just a few minutes ago his uh, his career his playing days leadership he has so many different things to to talk about and just all around good guy and then he's going to do a question and answer session which i think is going to be pretty cool so uh i opportunity for people to, to ask questions so you can either buy a table for eight hundred dollars you can buy an individual ticket for 150 dollars if you have seven other friends you can pull your resources together get a table and uh, really the details the best way to, to get in touch with uh, us to be able to buy a ticket you can email me lrb at pirate radio 1250.com you can call the studio here during business hours monday through friday we'll get your name and number and uh, myself or troy or somebody will get back in touch with you so uh, we look forward to that and uh we'll, we'll this we'll, we'll go first come first serve yeah. and we're, we're this gonna you know try to sell it out we don't have unlimited seats the murphy center is only so big so we only have a certain amount of folks we can uh, put in there and uh, i think that for an event like this basically a table sponsorship 100 dollars a head with what you get is very reasonable and look we uh it is not cheap to bring dale murphy to town great guy but we've got a lot of expenses with an event like this and bringing him into town um this is he does not do it for free <laughs> let me just say that and we're also trying to raise some money for ecu baseball's uh, restricted fund that goes directly to them where they see fit and also some other youth sports here in in greenville too so and we talked um, to dale we're going to have a nice autograph dale murphy jersey that that's going to be a part of the raffle to help us raise money for that so you you could uh, come to the event and walk away with a uh, cool, with a chance to win a cool uh, autographed jersey of dale murphy but uh if you're just joining us we just had a great interview with dale murphy you can go back and listen to it on your time but uh, i mean the guy that you think of if you grew up watching dale murphy play baseball and uh just the clean cut all-american guy i mean that's exactly who he is and i'm, I'm really looking forward to hear what he talks about and uh, just just a very easy going very, been very great him and his wife nancy they've been perfect to work with so far and i know that uh, sunday april 2nd is going to be an absolute ball and as you mentioned it is first come first serve and look we this is the first time we've talked about it you've already gotten multiple emails people ready to uh, purchase and be a part of it at your email lrb at pirate radio 1250.com we're going to put all the information on our website too what we just talked about so folks can refer back to that uh but we're you know this isn't tickets you can buy online we're gonna have to contact us here at the studio and we will uh take care of it for you but it is going to be a, an intimate gathering it's not going to be a massive event and uh, as we said we think it'll probably sell out pretty quickly we would love to have you be a part of it i've had a lot of friends that have asked me what are you who, what are y'all doing and I, even them i haven't said anything about it until just now so uh we, we think we're going to have a great crowd at the murphy center we've done events before they've always been successful there's no reason to think this one will be pardon the pun a home run yeah it's going to be a lot of fun uh Dale Murphy coming to Greenville April 2nd. Uh, I will get back to your emails. Uh, my texts are starting to blow up here, so uh, I, will, I will get back to people as diligently as possible. But uh, if you have my number or Troy's number, you can also call us directly there. But uh, looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a fun event and uh, just one of those things that – I mean, how many times you get an opportunity to to meet a living legend and uh, a guy that uh, is just 
I think, just a better person than he ever was a baseball player. Yeah. So look, look forward. Dale has eight kids, 15 grandkids. You heard him in the interview. He lives uh, in Utah. Uh, most of the time, and then I think during the spring and summer, spends a lot of time in Atlanta doing events. He mentioned his restaurant he has outside of Truist Park. So uh, he's very active, like during the baseball season. He's at his restaurant quite a bit. He still follows the Braves. He tweets about them every night. So he's still very in tune with what's going on. And let me ask the biggest Braves fan I know, Clip Rock, your thoughts. This is awesome. Uh, the idea of the uh, the VIP experience you talked about watching a Braves game with Dale Murphy is pretty like high like top five bucket list maybe i mean that's that's something uh you don't get that opportunity i kind of see like uh, uh dale murphy kind of in the joe gibbs category for you i knew when you met him what a big deal it was being a yeah. redskins fan this is kind of similar type of deal and for unfortunately a, a sports idol that you grew up you know probably loving yeah as a kid and, and a young kid like i uh, i started watching the braves at the tail end of murphy just like I kind of started knowing what the Redskins were when Washington was winning Super Bowls. So these are very early impressions of sports when you talk about Murphy and Gibbs. And I referenced this with Dale in the interview we just had other bit, but you never – I want to know, and, and I think I'm right if I had to put money on this, did young Johnny Ellerby – have a Dale Murphy poster in his room or house somewhere. Well, young Jonathan Ellerby did, but uh, I, know, he, I just I, want to make you sound younger. Yeah, I had the uh, Power, Power Alley, Alley, the Power Alley poster. Yeah. That's uh, if you go to Dale Murphy's Twitter at Dale Murphy Three. Um, that's the exact poster I had. Now, in do you my still have? Did you recently? You've helped your parents, you know, move out of their old house. You, you've gotten a lot of memorabilia out, like I did when my parents moved out of their house. Did you save that poster? I don't think I still. Because that would have been awesome to bring this event, have them sign it. We could throw it up here in the studio. I think it was well used and worn uh, yeah. it probably moved around a lot with a lot of tape and stuff but i had a bunch of dale murphy posters and i i, I got to do some more digging and uh, i still have a lot of my baseball cards that i grew up collecting and, and a lot of i mean i have a book a whole book of the 80s braves basically and i know i mean dale murphy was my absolute favorite player i mean he, he i mean i always tried to wear number three whenever i got a chance to pick my number whether i was playing baseball soccer or whatever growing up um i just always thought the world of dale murphy and uh unfortunately he had to play on a lot of bad braves teams uh he was the mvp back to back and i uh, did make the playoffs one time uh, seven-time Major League Baseball All-Star, but uh, just a iconic figure when you think of the Atlanta Braves. Uh, what, I think he was the fourth person to have his number retired by the Braves. So uh, just certainly, and just an all-around good person. The poster I remember the most in the '80s was the it was uh, the picture of him probably at the plate, and it was like a white box around it, and his his name real. And they did those with like every top player. It kind was of like a big font. baseball card. Yeah, it looked like a big baseball card. I remember seeing those everywhere growing up as a kid but uh those those were i don't know how much of a cut he got from those but they seem to be everywhere when i was growing up in the 80s and i think it'll be very interesting to hear him uh talk, tell stories about his team i mean you heard him rattle off a bunch of his braves teammates just there so uh i think the, the event at tiebreakers will be an opportunity where folks can uh have a little one-on-one -on -one time with dale murphy and then uh, of course also question and answer period during the dinner with dale murphy so uh I, i'm super excited about it uh, it seems like uh, we're getting a lot of great feedback back so far so if you're interested in attending certainly uh, reach out to us uh we're, we're going to try to you know get it to capacity where as many people as we can uh get to the murphy center and get to tiebreakers in there and uh have a fun time and uh, raise some money along the way and i think uh and when it's all said and done, uh, hopefully everybody will get more than what they uh, pay for when they show up at this event. I agree. I'm excited about it. And now it's it's like, what's next? I mean, is Chipper Jones coming? Um, Doug Williams, like every idol of my childhood, Ellery? I mean, you, you can make a submit a list. <laughs> submit <laughs> your list. Because <laughs> Dale Murphy's pretty high up there. So, like, we're doing, you know, we, we got to get the crime dog in. We did the uh, Damon West event for yes. folks and we had him on the air. That was really kind of a private event, but it really went well. And we're like, look, this is kind of a series we could continue with the right people uh we talked about doing you know one of these a, a year or so and uh this kind of opportunity we were brainstorming who would be good and uh both Ellerby and i thought man you know this uh, th th let's change it up and get a sports oriented guy in here and, and dame west is awesome but he's more kind of a motivational uh speaker type if you will and uh, dale who is a motivational speaker too but also with that sports background and legendary status we thought was just a, a no-brainer so uh it, there's a lot of logistics that go into this scheduling you know who's available and 
when they can come and when it's a good time to do it, not conflicting with home ECU baseball games and when buildings are available. So there, there's a lot of moving pieces to this thing. So uh, it's not as easy to pull off as, uh, as some might think, but we're glad to be able to get this put together because I think it's going to be a lot of fun and really cool experience to be able to uh, have Dale in Greenville who showcase uh, the university and the town to him and then also have so many folks be able to meet him face to face. Yeah, he said he's never been to Eastern North Carolina and he's really excited about his visit uh, when I've talked to him off the air. And, uh, you know, the other thing that we did the Damon West events, he's the coffee bean guy in case uh, you, you missed us talking about when Damon came and spoke to the ECU football team and the luncheon we did with him was, was during the week. Mm-hmm. And so this is a Sunday. It's an opportunity for you bring your kids um, to, to, hear, dinner. to hear a living yeah. legend uh, that Sunday, uh, Dale Murphy. So uh, just a, a, it is right there as baseball season for East Carolina is going to be, you know, in midseason, I guess, at that point. But uh, right before Little League starts. So uh, it's going to be a Sunday evening where hopefully people can take a moment to uh, come out and enjoy it. Uh, the, the final four games are that weekend, that Saturday night. And then the national championship game is that Monday. So that's Sunday. Right before uh, Easter. Yeah, the start, yeah. start of baseball. So come watch the National and Braves. Great time. Yeah, this is the Braves, I guess. First weekend. Yeah, I, first weekend of baseball. They're, they're opening in Washington. And then, yeah. uh, it, it, as, I, as Troy said, a lot of it timed out right. And yeah. we, we just kind of been working with the, his wife, Nancy, really, who's kind of his his agent helping him uh, set up everything. But I, th- I think it's going to be a really cool event. And uh, as I said, man, it, it, as nice as a person as I've ever talked to that has done so much in professional sports and uh, very humble. And uh, I, I'm just super excited. I can't be more excited to have someone of uh, Dale Murphy's caliber to, to come to Greenville and uh, meet and greet everybody. Everybody's going to be asking about players and games. I want to be asking about Skip Carey stories. Yeah. <laughs> I, to me, Tell us about it. Skip, Dan. Look, I want to hear about that, too. Yeah. I, I'm interested in the, in the Skip and Ted Turner stories. Yeah. You know, as a broadcaster, that's the kind of the stuff I want to hear about, too. So, Well, awesome it's funny stuff. he told the story in the interview that uh, Ted Turner came in and bumped the Braves back to 5 o'clock start <laughs> yeah. because yeah. Uh, he had a better – he could get higher ratings with someone other than the Braves. Shows you what TBS. it was like back then. Yeah. I how, mean, how times have changed and how, you know, the programming now is the game, but it wasn't always like that back then but man those early 90s when they went uh worst to first were some awesome times uh awesome awesome times all right lrb you running yeah i gotta run no i appreciate uh the time uh keep talking up i mean obviously a huge lineup today alec burleson coming up later on the program uh looking forward to watch him playing this uh baseball season for the uh, st louis cardinals got a new segment coming up next too clip what is it the moron of the month moron of the month yeah yeah well, this is your segment. I, well, it's, I didn't want to, you know, it's part of the show. This is a new segment we're going to try out. All right. Uh, are you prepared for it? I am. Okay, good. More on of the month coming up next. Yeah. He's prepared for this. <laughs> and yeah, I'm built for this clip. He, he did no, show uh, <laughs> No coincidence, this is Troy's segment, yeah. his idea. If anybody is built for this, it's me. More on of the month coming up with uh, Troy D. We got that and a lot more on the way. Pirate Radio Live. We'll take a timeout, come back. More to go. Hour one after this. East Coast Grading and Utilities is your source for clearing, hauling dirt, and concrete work. East Coast Grading and Utilities handles all sewer and water issues as well. I'm David Bone. Whether it's putting in a new subdivision or helping you with any and all of your drainage problems, I can get the job done. Call me at 531-7494. No job is too big or too small. East Coast Grading and Utilities. Friends helping friends. 531-7494. For East Coast Grading and Utilities. Have you experienced increased aches and pains recently? Have you heard of CBD? Hemp Garden is your premier CBD retailer in Eastern North Carolina. Do you find yourself having anxiety or in need of extra sleep support? Hemp Garden has a variety of Delta 8 and hemp-derived Delta 9 products that can assist with those issues. If you're unable to stop by the store, don't worry. Give them a call today at 413-6100 for a consultation and they'll ship right to your door. Hemp Garden, 3040 South Evans Street in the Target Shopping Center in Greenville. Flight by Yingling is the next generation of light beer. For those who don't follow trends, but craft them. Flight by Yingling is 12 ounces of uncompromised refreshment from America's oldest brewery. With only 2.6 grams of carbs and 95 calories, 
This is premium refreshment, six generations in the making. Don't just raise a glass, raise the bar. Flight by Yingling. Available wherever beer is sold. DG Yingling and Sun Incorporated. Pottsville, Pennsylvania. Please enjoy responsibly. This isn't your regular cola. So this isn't your regular cola ad. No beach parties or family barbecues here. Just Nitro Pepsi. The first cola ever infused with nitrogen. So forget everything you thought you knew about soda. Because that nitrogen gives us a whole new experience. Think an infusion of smaller bubbles for a cola that's got a lighter, smoother texture. And don't get me started on the pour. You don't pour this like any other cola. We're talking turn the can completely upside down and watch as those bubbles cascade into the glass to create a frothy, luxurious foam topping. Can your cola do that? I didn't think so. Unless you've got your own Nitro Pepsi, in which case, cheers to your great taste. Because you already know that the only thing better than the pour is the unapologetic cola taste. What else is there to say? From the creamy foam to the smooth texture to its unbelievably delicious flavor, this is cola like you've never had it before. Time to bring your taste buds to the next frontier. Nitro Pepsi. Smooth. Creamy. Delicious. The Rick House is Eastern North Carolina's premier American-style restaurant and bourbon bar with daily specials. And here's the lineup. Mondays feature $7 margaritas and half-price appetizers. Tuesday is stuffed seafood night. Wednesday is date night. Thursday is roasted smoked lamb chop night. Fridays is prime rib night. And Saturday is Italian night and is also Fred and Wilma night with our 36-ounce bone-in tomahawk steak just like the Flintstones. And on Sunday, it's our legendary brunch from 10 to 2. The Rick House, American provisions and spirits. 710 Red Banks Road beside the bowling alley in Greenville. Before anyone walks into your business, the outside is what they see. Make sure your first impression is a good impression with the right curb appeal. Hi, this is Daniel Andrews from Dan Andrews Lawn Service. We specialize in making your business look great. Let us handle all your professional landscaping needs. We do it all so you don't ever have to worry. Residential services are also available. Call us today at 717-8006 and we'll come out and give you a free quote. Taking care of your landscaping needs is all we do and we've been doing it for over 20 years. You can trust our reliable team at Dan Andrews Lawn Service covering all of Eastern North Carolina. To keep your bodies active and engaged in the activities that you love, you need a good stretch. And at Bodies in Balance, that's the mission they follow to give you the best quality of life. With years of experience, the team at Bodies in Balance can create a stretch or massage program that's right for you. Visit them at 3101 South Evans Street in Greenville or schedule a home visit to receive a stretch or massage in the comfort of your own home. Call today at 916-4530 to schedule your first stretch consultation or massage appointment and check them out online at bodiesandbalance.com. This is former ECU football player Bryce Williams, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to Hour One of Pirate Radio Live. Do you need custom t-shirts, apparel, or promotional items for your business, organization, or event? Keep it local. Print it local with University Sportswear. Contact them today at universitysportswearenc.com. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. University PC Care has been Pirate Nation's go-to IT expert since 2006 and are the local tech support experts for any of your business needs. Let University PC Care take care of it so you can take care of business. Visit universitypccare.com to learn more today. Now let's head back into Pirate Radio Live. Here is your host, Cliff Brock. Back with you, Pirate Radio Live, here on a beautiful Thursday in eastern North Carolina. Troy Se- D here. 73 degrees in the greater Greenville area, Clip, And I'll tell you, that'll put you in a good mood. Right here, it's smack dab in the middle of uh, January. No doubt. Ah, getting beach- Shorts and tea weather. Oh, getting beach fever, baby. Beach music. I heard y'all talking about beach music the other day. God, I wish I was on the show that day. I could have helped clarify a few things, but you got it figured out. Chandler got it figured out. You, I, was, I got what do you? Oh, no, Chandler no, I, got wood figured I'm out. I'm sorry, guy. You're right. Were you the one that figured? We were talking about two different you songs. You got Beach Fever and the Beach Club uh, down at. No, the beach you club. got Down at the Beach club. club. Yeah, which is separate from Beach Fever. And then we've got Down uh, Out on the Beach. No, on the beach. On, on the, the beach. beach. Yeah. That's, That's where, where I, I want to be. be. Want to be. Okay. Yep. Yeah. On the, the beach. beach. The problem is they're both by the chairman of the board. Gerald Johnson. Johnson. Yeah. Down at the beach club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So they're, yeah. They're That's where you find the, the one, one you love. Do you know that song? Oh, do I know that do song? It, does he know it? I play like a hundred times every summer. <laughs> I love the general. 
Uh, no doubt. Legendary. Uh, they've been to Pitt County. Dale Murphy will be here soon. General Johnson to me, <laughs> General Pretty Johnson good, right? to me is like what, let's say, Elvis was to your mom. You know, I can see your mom. talk about my mom. Well, you know what I'm saying. She was probably a big Elvis fan back in the day. Yo, mama. He is my Elvis. All right. I love the general. Speaking of Elvis, uh, somebody asked, Conan asked on YouTube, didn't Elvis come to Greenville? Did he? I don't know. I don't know. I saw that movie. It was pretty good. Better yes, schedule, it was. Better schedule some time, though. Two movies I've seen recently, very good, but very long. Like three hours. Uh, I saw Elvis in the theater. It was excellent. Austin Butler did a good job. It. Yeah. And it's really more the story of his manager than Elvis, but either way, great movie. Uh, and then I saw, I, I recently saw another movie in the theater. I've been kind of come almost a movie theater guy. Are you a movie buff? I've seen a lot of movies this last six months in theater. Like Troy's I mean, a theater guy? I am a theater guy. Uh, guess what I saw most recently? I, I don't know. Yes, I don't know well, out. out of the new releases, what do you guys think? Top Gun. I, I did see that in the theater, but that's been out Boom, for a while. No, but this isn't the one I saw last week. What do you think, Chan? Was didn't Avatar come out? Avatar, it is, my friend. You're wow. an Avatar guy. I, well, I there's not a lot of choices out there, and it was a great movie. Was it? Yes, All I right. was stunned. It's really kind of a movie. It, you know, you think it's just about these blue, you know, type of <laughs> Smurf alien things. It's really clip. The greater story is about family. <laughs> when you watch it, and right. if you've seen family. it, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, and at the end. Oh, the end got me, man. Oh, did you shed the a end, tear? Uh, I might have. The end got me. It was a, little, right. th- there was a, repo- a part at the end where it was a father-son thing at the end. I'm not going to be a spoiler, but there was a situation with the father and the son that just hit home. Okay. You know, so. I'll wait till it comes out on HBO Max or whatever. Yeah. Oh, but here's my point. A lot for over three hours to watch this thing because I went into the theater, I think it was like a four o'clock start time. And by the time between the movie and the half hour of previews, it was like 8 p.m. when I got out. A lot of people complain about. Which I was fine with previews just, and trailers. I like it. I like uh, oh, the previews. I get there. They kind of get me jacked up. I cannot look if I'm going to a theater and I'm paying the prices to see it there. I want to see the previews. You're gonna get your money's worth. I, and it's I know it's gonna be 20, 30 minutes of previews. I'm fine with that, and I don't want to miss it. Yeah, I used to Absolutely. like that part of it, which now you can see actually, them all on YouTube. But. And actually, I like the, um, the the next movie I think, I think I'm think i going to go see in person is Indiana Jones is coming out with their final one with Harrison Ford. The the, the final chapter in that, tri- not trilogy. Gosh, how many Indiana Jones have they made now? Would this be like the fifth one? Temple of Doom and I don't know. I, yeah. I don't even know if I've watched them. But just I'm hearing just that theme again from Indiana Jones kind of gets you fired up. All right, uh, uh, we... Clip, can I uh, interrupt you for just Please a second? Please do. I was just uh, going through um, some visits that Elvis made. Now, All I right. can tell you, um, in 1955, he made multiple stops uh, in North Carolina. He played in New Bern three different times during wow. the year 1955. Sassy Seymour was there. Yep, yeah, Asheville twice. Uh, he played in Raleigh uh, twice in 55, came back again in 56, was in High Point, also uh, performed at Fleming Stadium in Wilson. Wilson, wide awake. Home of the uh, Wilson Tobbs yeah. in September of that year. Thomasville, Greensboro, Charlotte. Um, I'm thinking and, if he went to Wilson and New Bern, he had to stop through Greenville at some I'm point. I'm sure, but uh, now if Greenville if he, was a lot smaller back then, yeah, right. He yeah. was. He also uh, he did come through Wilson another time, but as far as a tour stop or a music stop, uh, no, he did not come to Greenville. However, he it's possible he came through here, but not from a performance capacity. Yeah, I'm sure he had a baby mama here. There was, um, you know, we talk about, you know, celebrities and, and people who have come to Greenville. We, we have had, obviously, we're looking forward to having Dale Murphy here in town. Uh, there was an artist, a musical artist, I was actually going to work on bringing to Greenville to play at the Pirate Radio football kickoff party clip. This was this was probably about... I remember you talking about this. I don't know, like 10 years ago or so. Nice sigh, by the way. <laughs> I mean, that sounded just like the original. You had a good one the other day. We'll talk about that in a minute. But We don't have a minute. we got to get going. But anyway, I was before I was working, and th- this he didn't have any new hits. He was kind of off the radar at this point. 
but I wanted, I was going to try, and I knew someone that was part of his management team at the time. And I was going to see how much it cost well, if we could pull it off. And I thought we might have had a sponsor for it. I was going to try and bring Prince to town to play Purple Rain at the Pirate Radio kickoff party. What? It, it, what? Was, the, it was the year, and then he, like, died. Yeah, it was like, the to, same year he passed same away. Same year he passed away. How, that, what do you mean you were going to try? How like far I was, along? I, I, I was contacting a person that was knew someone in his inner circle, like his management team. So we were started the process of, hey— if we were, and he wasn't really touring that night then. It wasn't like he. It doesn't matter. He's Prince. I, mean, I know. If, that's why I thought it would have been awesome. If we, we have like Prince money, can I get a raise? No. Well, I, we weren't going to do it for unlimited funds. If we if we were going to see how much it would have been, hey, if you can come to Greenville, can you play for 20, you know, 20, 30 minutes or at least play Purple Rain and then leave? <laughs> yeah. Just been, you, we weren't even going to announce about it. We were going to do stars. it as a, as a surprise. I mean, you know how epic that would have been? Nobody would have believed. They would have thought it would be an impersonator I know. or something. No, no, no. But it was going, like, if we could have pulled that thing off, that would have been the most epic <laughs> well, yeah. surprise in the history of surprises. And we weren't going to sell, you know, we were just going to let, do it as a, you know, uh, in the event it fell through, we didn't have anything to apologize for or have to refund money or anything like that. He only that. played the Super so, Bowl and then the Pirate Radio. But this party. was, uh, th- remember, this was, you know, t- 10 years after the Super Bowl. It doesn't matter. He's still Prince. Like, I, I know, but there's a lot. That's of not like Uncle Cracker uh, 15 years after his hit. We're talking about Prince. I, right. But I still think we could have gotten it for a decent value back then. Huh. This was I'm talking like ten. Well, how long ago has it been since he passed away? Shirley? He died like 2016. Okay, yeah. So it was like probably that 2015, 2016. But he wasn't doing a lot right then when it happened, and might have been available. And we were trying to figure out ways to potentially pull that thing off. Man. It would have been awesome. Sure. So, I mean that yeah, that'd have been an all timer there. Yeah. I mean that would have been national headlines. Prince plays Purple Rain at. You know, <laughs> just in Greenville, North well, Carolina. We do, Cliff. We, we, and, well, they would have said Greenville, South Carolina, or Greensboro, yeah. North Carolina, For Eastern or State, Carolina University, yeah. Eastern State Tigers yeah. play this weekend. All right, Troy, we have to get to the moron of the week, the moron of the month. Month. <laughs> Way to go, moron. <laughs> and today's moron. <laughs> Surprise. You're looking at him. Spoiler alert. Moron right. of the month. Mor- Thank you, Jeff. What is it again? Hit it again, sure. The moron of the month. The moron of the month. All right, I'm going to let you get this guy. I kind of feel bad for this guy. But, oh, man, he, there's something wrong. It's when you, He went into the game missing an extra point. He then misses four extra points. You're talking about the Mar of the month. <laughs> the nice. Moron, the nice. moron of the month. <laughs> nice wordplay. Brett Marr is the moron of the month, missing five now extra points in the last two games. Dallas has signed a new kicker, has him on uh, ready to go if they need him. They're going to make a decision uh, here on Friday of how practice goes. So they have uh, signed another kicker, and they're ready to put uh, Brett on ice if they have to. But as of right now, they seem to be supporting him. I was but unaware they signed a kicker. They did sign a kicker. All right. Yep. Uh, Tristan Viscaino. Okay. Did not know that. Yeah. So moron of the month, Brett yeah. Marr. Yep. The moron of the month. Just think if that game was close, and they were going back oh. and forth, and he kept or if they lost, like if they lost by three. And he missed four extra points. That's the difference in the game. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. They're and lucky it was a blowout. Very. And now. Because I don't think this 49ers game ain't going to be a blowout for the Cowboys. Everybody's going to be fascinated when they line up for a field goal or an extra point on Sunday. Edge of my seat. See what happens. I mean, how can you not be? All right. More on of the month. Yeah. Troy D., we are out of time. Good stuff, Clip. Enjoyed it. As did I. Dale Murphy coming to Greenville. Dinner with Dale. Sunday, April 2nd at the murphy center five o'clock to six thirty, you can get a table you can buy individual tickets email ellerby at pyradio 1250.com call the station for more details and to uh, get a ticket for more information you go to pr927fm.com and click on the ad at the top of the website all right when we return the baseball talk rolls on with ryan meadows got the down east baseball pitching and catching clinic coming up And we will discuss that and more when we return on Pirate Radio Live after this. The Buccaneer Music Hall is your beacon of music in the land of pirates. The doors open at noon, seven days a week. And the Buck has live music every night along with football. 
Monday is open mic night the first Monday of each month. Tuesday, it's karaoke with DJ Captain Morgan. Wednesday, it's acoustic night. Thursday, it's the dance party with DJ Kid Scene and live music every Friday and Saturday night with the best bands on the East Coast. Follow The Buck on Instagram for information and schedule of events. This season, party like a pirate at The Buck. Do you want to get rid of wrinkles, tighten and lift your skin, smooth your skin texture, erase veins and brown spots, get rid of unwanted hair and under eye fat pads? Are you interested in Botox or filler? Contact the licensed professionals at Beauty Bar Medi Spa for a free consultation and ask about our newest technologies and treatments. Learn more at BeautyBarMediSpa.com, Red Banks Road, Greenville. Enjoy your visit, love your transformation, and go Pirates! Country Mart has been locally owned and operated for over 40 years and is your premier country store serving the best cheese biscuits and country food around. Country Mart is open every day and has two locations in Bethel on Highway 11 and in Stokes on Highway 903. Both Country Mart locations are top-of-the-line fuel stations serving shell gas including 93 ethanol-free high-octane gas. Country Mart, fueling you up with great food in your engines with great gasoline. Go Pirates! Happy New Year. This is Talbot Green, and I'm excited to announce our new partnership with Integrity Home Mortgage. Integrity Home Mortgage offers a wide variety of programs ranging from conventional, government, and portfolio loans, plus construction and lot loans. Our Integrity Home Mortgage team of Talbot Green, Braxton Green, and Joanne Weir offer over 50 years of experience and is committed to providing you with superior customer service. To get started, call me, Talbot Green, 714-2076. NMLS 28516, Equal Housing Lender. Greenville's newest sports bar is officially open. Coco's Sports Bar, located in the old Professor O'Cool's location right off of Greenville Boulevard, has daily specials, including $2.50 aluminum bottles on Tuesdays and $1 wings on Wednesdays. Along with their great food, Coco's has great entertainment for you and the crew to enjoy with karaoke on Thursdays, a live DJ on Fridays, and live music every Saturday night. Check out Coco's Sports Bar on Facebook for the latest information on menu items, drink and lunch specials, and more. Go Pirates! Great. It's 30 degrees in here. This is going to be a cold night. No one's coming out this late. I'm on firewood. Dad! I'll put hot coals in our socks for bedtime. Mom! Hi, I'm from Delcor Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Got an email about your heat being out? That was me. I sent it from my phone. I think your socks are on fire. Ah! Call Delcor today to get a new system installed for less than $100 a month. Offer expires soon. Go to DelcorInc.com. Monthly fee based on new system financing is 9.9% APR for 120 months. Call Delcor for details. Do you ever talk to yourself about where to eat today, and then you hear, Warren's Hot Dogs. Then you're thinking, yeah, two hot dogs, chips, and a drink for only six twenty-five would be awesome. Warren's Hot Dogs. And maybe some homemade lemonade, perhaps a pizza or a sub, and definitely an apple or peach turnover. Warren's Hot Dogs. Don't overthink where to eat today. Go to Warren's Hot Dogs in Greenville across from Ron Ayers or in Chacoanity next to the fire station. Warren's Hot Dogs, serving the Pirate Nation since 1991. Go Pirate. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is Brian Buck with Buck Insurance Agency. This season, when you attend your favorite sporting event, take the game day pledge. If your team is playing, win or lose, support your team to the end of the game. When you leave early, you risk missing your favorite athlete making the play of their career. When our family buys a ticket, we always plan to stay to the very end. Take the game day pledge this season with Buck Insurance Agency. Play to the end, stay to the end. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, 1250 at 92.7 FM Greenville, WDLX Washington, 930 at 104.1 FM Washington. You're listening to Hour 2 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by Beauty Bar Metaspa. Do you want to get rid of wrinkles, tighten and lift your skin, smooth your skin texture, erase veins and brown spots and get rid of unwanted hair? Are you interested in Botox or filler? Visit BeautyBarMetaspa.com to set up a free consultation. Now back to the show. Welcome back. UBE has been an ECU tradition for over 50 years. You can shop online anytime at PirateWear.com. UBE has the biggest and best selection of ECU sportswear and accessories for pirates of all ages. Every day is game day at UBE. Now let's head back in to Pirate Radio Live. Here is your host, Clip Brock. 
Back with you, Pirate Radio Live here on a Thursday. Big announcement in hour number one. Dale Murphy coming to Greenville, North Carolina. Dinner with Dale, Sunday, April 2nd at the Murphy Center. For more information, go to PR927FM.com and click on the ad at the top of the website. You can uh, meet a living legend here, Dale Murphy, talk about his career and a lot more coming up on april the 2nd that's awesome that'll be the uh, first series third game of the season for the braves the pirates will be on the road at the houston cougars and baseball will be in full swing and a lot of stuff going on right now hot stove banquet uh tonight i believe you got the ecu uh baseball banquet coming up next week and also the 2023 down east pitcher and catcher camp and here to talk about it is Ryan Meadows once again. Coach Meadows, good to see you, man. What's going on, man? Thanks for having me. And you had the hitting camp before the new year. Yep. Was that another success? Very, very big success. Yeah, we were very pleased with it. Good to hear. And then the flip of the calendar means it's time for the pitcher and catcher camp coming up. This will be January 28th. But, uh, Ryan, you said registration r- closes on Tuesday. Yeah, we're going to close it down Tuesday so we can uh, – you know, finalize the logistics of the camps and finalize the groups, get information out to all the players and parents, and uh, hopefully have a have a great Saturday. Grades 3 through 12, it'll be, uh, once again, at North Pitt High School. And what are the other who, what, when, where, why people need to know, Ron? Yeah, we're going to uh, we're gonna condense it down to a one-day camp this year, still have the same great instructors, instruction, uh, you know, organization, uh, you know, opportunities for improvement and 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 fun and everything like that uh so it's uh next saturday january 28th it's at north pit high school like you said uh we're all gonna run it a little bit earlier so camp will start at nine we're going to get done about uh about 4 45 that day um or so uh and uh it should be great it's, it's 125 dollars to go like i said we're going to uh shut the registration down i guess 11 p.m tuesday night uh we've got some great instructors uh we've got some good numbers and uh some good some good players coming to the camp we're excited to work with so it's going to be great yeah and you've got uh a pirate battery uh that will be there and evan voliva and jake washer i know jake was part of the hitting yeah. camp as well uh good to see spencer brickhouse on the list talked to mike mullis earlier this week he's yep. planning on being out there as well as all of the uh other great coaches here around the area in high schools and and other uh levels of baseball so once again a star-studded cast gonna be helping out the kids out there yeah we're really excited you know evan and jake have been with us since uh since day one actually i think their their pirate career winded down right when we were starting this thing and they've been great to us and they're so good to work with and and jake actually uh took over the leading the catchers last year uh jake lowry from the washington nationals has been instrumental in us putting this stuff on and and jake uh you, you know last year we ran to a buzzsaw because a year ago last year it's hard to believe leave with the 74 degrees outside but was the weekend that it snow and iced <laughs> and uh had about an inch of snow ice we had to postpone the following weekend so that kick uh kicked lowry out and uh jake washer stepped in and did a great job with the um with the camp and unfortunately jake lowry uh has to he's been called to uh, early spring training which is great for him because he's really uh, accelerating through the national organization on the coaching staff and in the ranks so jake uh, washer is going to lead our catchers again and uh evan uh evan Valiva is going to lead our pitchers this year we're excited about that um obviously a tremendous career in high school in, in north carolina and uh, with East Carolina University, obviously uh, a tremendous, uh, tremendous pl- uh, pitcher and player for them, and uh, in the Yankees organization, fighting through some injuries and doing some rehab things now. And uh, great mind, great person. We, we're excited for Evan to, to lead our pitchers this that, weekend. Yeah, that's fantastic. And once again, for uh, kids to get this kind of instruction from uh, the legends in the area, but also former Pirates and guys trying to make it in the pros right now that's uh i mean you can you can't put a price on that as a kid i would uh i remember uh as a child going to a baseball camp and it was like a day camp 
but George Foster was there, yeah. and I was too young to really right appreciate it. And then looking back on it, like wow, that's man, like he was good. Big red machine, yeah. like he had a lot that, of home runs <laughs> that he did. Yeah, so uh, really cool stuff here. Um, Ryan, you mentioned Evan and uh, and Jake being there mm-hmm. or Evan, since the beginning of this. So you kind of brought this back, right? Like let's yeah. talk about the the down east camp what it was the hiatus and then you kind of bringing it all back together yeah you know it, it originated in snow hill with um coach howard mccullough and coach rabbit Fordham and and some others but th- they were instrumental in really starting this thing a long time ago before my playing days and and um not too much before it but uh i, I came along through uh through the camps in snow hill uh pretty much the same time frame of the calendar the, the hitting was always you know november area and then right before high school kicked off and everybody kicks off now the pitching and catching and um you know it it it, it ran its course there and they did a tremendous job with it and then it actually moved over, i believe um either pit or lenore community college one of those i can't remember if coach uh, coach easton took it on first or uh, back then stony wine at lcc and then the other one had it so it's been at both those stops uh as you mentioned it did take a hiatus for a while and uh probably uh, a good decade of of not much going on and and you know four or five years ago i was kicking around the idea and talking to some buddies and just uh understood the need for it and the response has been tremendous um you know that th- there's a lot of not just great coaches on that paper but really just great men that, that want to give back uh so much has been given to them along the years and, and i'm no different in that in that aspect and I, I can assure you they don't get paid very well um i don't make any money off this thing so it, it's really more of a a community um you know i don't want to say outreach but a community project that that we we take a lot of pride in and and look don't don't make a mistake it, it's just as much fun for us as is the kids um you know i'm counting the days down until i can get around all my buddies on this sheet and uh you know hang out with them and watch them do what they do best which is to to share the game of baseball with young men and, and young boys. So uh, we're really excited about that. A lot of rivals on this sheet, whether it be, you know, uh, on the diamond, the schools themselves. But yeah. pretty cool how everybody can can get uh, get together and teach the game of baseball. What a baseball community, yeah. softball community even we have here in eastern North Carolina. And events like this sure. especially show that. Yeah, it's awesome, man. And, I mean, look, I was blessed to be in the, in the Pitt County High School coach of attorney for, I guess, 21 years and uh wow. they can say what they want to about coach Vincent and coach mills and, and coach mccray and, and and you know coach lozer and myself at farmville and north pit or, or whoever um but there's so much respect that runs through those those rivalries and uh you know this it, it, it's just a game and and places like the next level training center with all these different high school players come together and train together and i think showcase baseball has changed a lot of those lines too i don't think the competitive spirit is is gone from those games but i do think uh, a lot of what people would think the hatred Mm -hmm. has gone you know back in my day and before that you know conley and rose people really didn't hang out as much i i guess you would say and and now and i know we've talked about american legion on this team but but that leads into the chemistry of yeah. uh, summer teams like that being stronger from the beginning is these kids know each other so much better and the rivalry is is really just a, a competitive drive more than a hatred now and it's no different from rv and mills and you know they're good friends off the field and, and i'm lucky to share a great relationship with with all these guys so it's, it's fun and as a conley guy i quote unquote hated rose by yeah. the time i was a junior and senior i was partying with rose sure. guys every weekend the problem with rv though is he's not hateable yeah i know you know like yeah. it's not yeah. even fun yeah he's just such a great guy right. yeah you can't yeah. hate him so it's like all right it's RV, i gotta pull for him it's hard to do it and you know what the the <laughs> The hatred comes from you just hate losing to them. Yeah. You don't hate them as people, most of them. All right, yeah. I had just as many people in my own high school that I hated that, <laughs> that, that, that I did at D.H. Conley or right. wherever. I mean, you just you didn't want to lose because yeah. you were hanging out with them on the weekends. You were, you know, behind the scenes maybe going to a party or two, and you didn't want to show up and, and have anybody have the – the bragging rights on you yeah. so that's the same way we are uh ryan meadows joining us ryan uh new gig for you new hobby what do you what are you calling your uh 
your gig there at uh, LCC. Yeah, it's, it's a new adventure. I okay. mean, it's it's an opportunity that that fell in my lap, and uh, you know, I guess you're referring to me being at Lenore Community College now with with a Coach proud Jerry Lancer, Smith. proud Lancer. Yeah, well, I've actually taught there off and on there, um, non fact I mean, on on the faculty um, part time for for a while. Okay. I haven't in a couple of years um, since COVID kind of shut down some classes so i'm pretty familiar with the campus and the faculty and all that and i'll be honest man i, I got out at, at north pit and um as coaching wise and that's still my daytime job um that's still my number one priority is my family you know my number two priority is the my full-time teaching job at north pit that's what pays my bills that's where my allegiances will be first and foremost um you know i've moved into a different role the athletic department where i'm just more of a uh, a facility, uh, yeah. uh, not a maintenance guy. I'm actually the turf manager, if you want to say, taking care of the baseball, football, softball field, pretty much around the clock year round, which I've enjoyed doing that and bring those up to par. But, you know, Gary Smith and Lenore was one of the first ones to, to contact me like the day after I resigned. And I was like, man, just, you, no, no, <laughs> you know, let's, let's, let's not, let's not go there quite the, the yet. The body's and, still warm, man. Yeah, on, man. Uh, I'm not, I'm not into it. So, you know, obviously, man, I've, I've prayed a lot about it and and um just wherever i end up one day will end up and i've had a, a great opportunity to coach anything from little league age kids this year to uh 12u girls softball to high school players and, and now getting to branch out and and get my feet wet a little bit in college baseball was uh is is a good thing so again it, it's extremely part-time um he needs the help and he needs the advice and, and and we all as baseball guys want somebody if it's nothing more than a phone call at night kicking some ideas off of uh, that's what i'll provide i'll provide anything that that it takes to advance his program forward so um you know it's not exactly an everyday thing but uh it's going to be fun i'm looking forward to, to the learning opportunity ryan meadows joining us and uh ryan you've got the camp coming up next weekend and and we'll we'll circle back to that because i want to like so if there's a kid there that you see something kind of fundamentally wrong with the way he's throwing or the way yeah. um you can fix those things sure. if there's a kid doing it right you, you just want to improve what he's doing i mean you have sure. enough uh i guess staff there to kind of individualize it i would think yeah we're really looking forward to the format this year as we kind of talked about a little bit earlier it's going to a one-day format we we think for the hitting camp two days is is almost a must it's necessary for the pitching and catching camp we thought we could condense it to a one-day camp and we're certainly going to try hard this year we kind of looked at it and said man these high school kids right now, I mean, they're really deep into their preseason work. I mean, they're going at Conley Rose, wherever, North Pitt, all across the state and all across the country. They're Monday through Friday right now trying to get ready. So, you know, we thought it was a little bit overkill, and it might be hurting our numbers actually a little bit going, okay, they're, they're going all week at – ex high school right. and then we're asking them to come out on saturday and sunday and then they're reporting back monday for their winter workouts these kids are going like two weeks not having a break and it's january so we're, we're hoping the one day format is going to um you know help that a little bit and we can actually do more with them with the getting sunday off but with that said um we're also looking forward to the opportunity of they're actually going to get on the mound get videoed go to the video room break down they're going to be given a note card take notes on, on on you know what the instructors tell them and then they're going to be able to take that note card directly to the next station hand it to the instructors there and it's going to say whatever the adjustments they need mm -hmm. to, to make on there and then have a guy like jason mills or evan or who is a really high level pitching guy help make those adjustments on an individualized basis so a lot is going to be going on in those hours to to get them better and we're hoping if they don't get better by the time they leave it's going to be their fault that's so, awesome yeah that's that's yeah. Uh, fantastic so that's going on next week and uh tuesday the registration closes so if parents want to get their kids signed up ryan how do yep. they go about doing that yeah everything's done on our website everything's electronic it's uh I, I don't know is it still www i guess you can skip that part. yeah skip that part now <laughs> yeah uh down east org o r g last week we played the name that sound game and we're bringing it back today but surely played the dial up internet sound yeah and chandler had no idea what it was and wow said that that was like the soundtrack to uh you know 
our teenage the old years. AOLD. Just crossing our fingers, we yeah. could like get online to see a score or something. Right back in the day. Right. Uh, but yeah, you can uh, go to the website, sign up there, and uh, going to be another great camp. Yeah, Ryan, no it's doubt be about great. It. Any questions? My email is downeastcamps at gmail dot com. All right, good stuff, Ryan. Uh, thanks for joining us, man. Always fun, man. I appreciate you having me and yeah. promote this thing. And if you got any. Uh, Need any help from us, let us know. Uh, we'll do. And we'll do the same with you. Appreciate it, man. All right, bud. Ryan Meadows, we'll take a time out. Come back. Got more to go. Pirate Radio Live. Shirley is bringing it back for another week. We got Name That Sound coming up at 5 o'clock. Alec Burleson will join us to talk about his Major League Baseball debut in 2022 and what he's going to do for an encore in 23. We'll also talk some local sports and more with Brett Kennedy, WCTI 12. A lot more to go on Pirate Radio Live. Back with you after this. It's bow time. You've probably heard folks say, don't call it a comeback. But at Bojangles, we don't like to beat around the bush. So when the sizzling, savory pork chop griller's back in all its tender, marinated chili lime glory, and you can get a pork chop griller combo for just $4.59, go ahead, call it a comeback. Get a legendary pork chop griller combo for just $4.59, only at Bojangles. It's bow time. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is Holt Nailers for my friends at ArcPoint Labs. Just as I trust my teammates, you can trust ArcPoint Labs to give you quick and accurate results for your laboratory testing needs. ArcPoint Labs provides insights and solutions to enable individuals, businesses, and communities to make informed decisions on their health, safety, and well-being. Visit any of the six Eastern North Carolina ArcPoint Labs locations or go to arcpointlabs.com. Go Pirates! For years, Callie Ann Phelps has been singing about Phelps Chevrolet. Phelps Chevrolet is the one for you. Low, low prices, service too. See the big dealer right away. Carolina's finest, Phelps Chevrolet. And you'll agree with what Skyler Phelps has to say. Nobody beats Phelps Chevrolet's prices. Nobody. The name you can depend on. Phelps Chevrolet. Get you one. Chico's Mexican Restaurant is where the fiesta never ends. Grab your amigos and head to Chico's every Wednesday for shrimp tacos for $11.99. Plus, Wednesdays means all Mexican imports for just $2.99. Thursdays, enjoy your favorite beef, chicken, or vegetable fajitas for only $11.99. For Mexican food and fun, it's got to be Chico's Mexican Restaurant in downtown Greenville and online at chicosrestaurant.com. Chico's, where the fiesta never ends. When it comes to hauling dirt, asphalt, or stone, you can trust the pros at First and Goal Hauling Incorporated. They have a fleet of dump trucks ready to get the job done. And best of all, it's owned and operated by ECU football alum Dakota Marshall. When you have a big job and you need it done right, count on First and Goal Hauling, where it's a touchdown every time. Keep up with Dakota Marshall and First and Goal Hauling by following them on Facebook today. Greenville Utilities Electric customers will soon be able to receive text notifications in the event of power outages. Enrollment is automatic, so make sure GUC has your cell phone number by signing into your account at GUC.com, then update the information in your user profile. Want to talk with someone instead? Call 252-752-7166 during business hours. 252-752-7166. Update us so we can update you. Visit GUC.com for more information. Winslow's is now Fifth Street Hardware Restaurant and Tap Room. With a brand new look, Fifth Street Hardware also has a new menu and serving lunch and dinner every Tuesday through Sunday and brunch starting at 1030 on Sundays. What else is new? Well, they have poker every Tuesday night, trivia Wednesday with DJ Captain Morgan, and on Friday and Saturday nights, they have live music open till 2 a.m. serving light appetizers all night long. New look, new name, same location on Fifth Street. Follow them on Facebook and Instagram for more specials. Fifth Street Hardware Restaurant and Tap Room. This is Steven Igo. You've heard from me plenty on Pirate Radio Live and perhaps have read some of my work on hoistthecolors.net. Now, get an extension of our in-depth coverage on the Hoist the Colors podcast. 
From game previews to immediate post-game analysis to emergency podcasts for breaking news, we've got you covered. A cast of guest co-hosts from fans, former coaches, and other writers join me for two podcasts weekly to break down all things ECU athletics. Subscribe to Hoist the Colors now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Google Podcasts. This is CJ Mayhew, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. Listening to Hour 2 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by Beauty Bar Meta Spa. Do you want to get rid of wrinkles, tighten and lift your skin, smooth your skin texture, erase veins and brown spots and get rid of unwanted hair? Are you interested in Botox or filler? Visit BeautyBarMetaSpa.com to set up a free consultation. Now back to the show. Welcome back. Hey, Pirate Nation, Integrity Home Mortgage is here. If you're looking to purchase a home, contact Talbot Green, Braxton Green, and Joanne Weir today. The Integrity Integrity Home Mortgage Team offers over 50 years of experience and is committed to providing you with superior customer service you deserve before, during, and after your real estate transaction. To get started, contact Talbot Green, Braxton Green, or Joanne Weir. Integrity Home Mortgage, Pirates support, uh, supporting Pirates. Now let's head back in to PRL. Here's Clip. Back with you on Pirate Radio Live on a Thursday still to come. Burley, Alec Burleson, going to join us at 5 o'clock. Brad Kennedy in hour number three as well, and we'll open up the booty bag. <clears throat> Big announcement from earlier today, Dale Murphy coming to Greenville. Dinner with Dale Murphy, Sunday, April 2nd at the Murphy Center. For more information, go to PR927FM.com. Click on the ad at the top of the website operators are standing by and i say that tongue-in-cheek but shirley's already gotten calls ellerby's already getting emails so tickets are going to go pretty fast for this thing yeah i think so which is really cool because i've said this before but my sister is named after dale murphy my mom decided to name my sister after dale murphy and my brother after jack dempsey who is uh a rather famous boxer well I'm the I only like one. the sports the, names. Yeah, I'm the only one that doesn't have a sports name, and I'm the athlete in the family. You're named <laughs> after uh, Boston Celtics <laughs> slam dunk champion D. Brown. Yeah. Even though so. you were born before he won his uh, slam dunk championship. Yeah. Uh, D. There's got to be D. There was another D. Brown that played at Illinois. There was D. Gordon, uh, former shortstop. D. Gordon. Yeah. Which yeah, I don't who know played too many. I mean, way after you were born. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm thinking, uh, yeah. So I was I was named after <clears throat> um, a half sister, um, but my my sister and my brother were both named after athletes, which I thought was kind of weird that neither one of them are athletes, but I'm the and one. And you still and, play softball? Yeah, I'm still playing. Uh, Dale Murphy coming to town is cool. Brad says Britney Spears in Greenville would be cool too. Who? What is Brittany doing? With her? I have an important question. Go ahead. What is Brittany doing with her life? Who? Who? Brittany. <laughs> Brittany who? Spears. 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 What is she doing with her career? <laughs> Why do we care at this point? Is she here? Is she here? <laughs> I don't know. 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 I just wanted to know what she doing her life. Thank you, Mike Patrick, for that legendary call. Josh Thomas, uh, he says, I'm in there like swim swimwear. He says he's already got a table. All right. The early nice. bird gets the worm. Um, Alex says he thinks it may be beneficial to have fake Mike Oresco interview Patrick Mason to talk about the Power Six situation next week. <laughs> And Alex, I just want to say that's a, that's a fantastic <laughs> idea. When you think about Justin Hardy and Shane Carden and Ruff McNeil and the Pirate Nation and Power Six, and I'd love to have a uh, discussion with Patrick Mason about that next week. So fake Mike Oresco is going to ask the hard, hey, we're going to flip, we're going to turn the tables. I'm going to be interviewing Patrick Mason, asking him what his beef is with P6. P6 pride, baby. The question this is, is just exactly how many answers will P Mace be able to answer considering 
Mike Oresco's rather winded questions. Well, I don't know. I, uh, are you? Do you have beef with me, Shirley? I need you to shorten it up a bit. Well, you you came in here today looking like a kiwi fruit with that shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna oh, take it easy, Commish. I'll, I'll take it easy. <laughs> a guy wearing a Titleist hat and a Callaway shirt telling me to take it easy. Ooh. Take it easy, Commish. What are you wearing? Cleveland thongs and ping <laughs> ping socks. You Show us what? the ping socks, you loser. <laughs> They're Adidas. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm angry. Hey, anybody got beef with Mike Oresco? Bring it on. <laughs> I'll take you down to Chinatown, if you know what I mean. Oh, wow. Chris Floyd says, game time, y'all. He's a huge fan of this uh, of this game. It's game time. Hit the theme. <laughs> Name that sound. Name that sound. It's all around. Going about town. I Name that sound. Not. And here's your host, Shirley Rose. <laughs> if, if we ever have a third installment, which trust me when I say I have plenty more that we could, but I will try to have a theme, but I did not think of All right, theme. we'll collab on that. Okay. And uh, get a theme song together. All right, uh, Shirley, week two, game two, episode two of Name That Sound. Last week, Chandler and I went toe-to-toe, and boy, did we struggle. Uh, I came out with a, I think, four-to-three victory, a narrow victory. It was a very narrow victory. It was a defensive struggle. Uh, The folks playing at home did much better than we did, and uh, hopefully... We can both redeem ourselves on this Thursday. I true. I don't know, guys. I don't know. But uh, in case you are a first-time uh, listener of Name That Sound, we're going to play three rounds, and each round has five sounds. And at the end of the game, I actually have a bonus sound b- 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 that bonus. is worth 20 points if you nail it. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 love, added a little, I, I love games with rules that don't make sense because yeah. I have a lot of those myself. Yeah, I just decided to add a little wrinkle there. Um, and these are pop culture sounds, okay. um, but they could be from absolutely anywhere. Movies, right. TV, uh, you know, electronics. Uh, electronics. It could yeah. be just about anything. All right. So are we ready for sound number one? I, sound number one I made very, very easy just so you could guys just – you Throw said out. that last week. Yeah, well. Is it somebody's turn, or how do we no. do it? No, we're going to do it just like we did, uh, okay. well, at the end of the game last week, which All is right. just yell out the answer, first person to gets it right. Okay. All right, here we go. Here's the first sound. Very easy. Taco Bell. There you go. I mean, fat, fat boy's got to get Taco Bell. <laughs> yeah. I even like Taco Bell, and I got it. Okay, here we go. Run for the border. Next sound. Pac-Man, Zelda. You are correct, sir. That's that's unfair. It is a tad I admit, bit that's unfair. unfair. Yeah. That's a bit. And Chan, in your defense, you don't, you're not as in tune with pop culture in as in tune as or maybe, Nintendo games. Or Nintendo games as maybe Clip is. Uh, the Legend of Zelda to be uh, full title. You are correct. And for just brownie points, do you know what part of Zelda this is? Because there's actually part. What does that yeah, mean? There's a section that this mu- that this music plays in. It's not the startup music. Uh, it's when you're walking around or something. Yeah, it's called Overworld. Okay. That's why I said it would be brownie points if you got it. I remember as a young child, there were parts of Zelda that used to scare me. When you oh, yeah. like, go in the dark and yeah, oh, the, some scary the dark parts. part of sca- yeah, I didn't like that one either. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Next sound. Are we ready? Yeah. Baywatch. Damn, he is back. <laughs> and the thing was, is I had cut it off. Oh, you don't. Keep I had cut it off. No, no, no. I was gonna Super give you. Buster. I have the full version right here. Well, Shirley, these are almost tailor made for me. I tried to make them hard. I didn't think he was gonna get this. They're, oh, well, they're hard. Would for you, Chandler, would for you, me. Would you have ever got this? No. Afraid to step into the light. Okay. So, all right. 
Uh, All right, I'm not going to answer this, is this the, next This one. is the first, just the first round. Okay. So, yeah, this is and great. the last one's worth 20. I can't, so yeah, I can't. All I got to do is answer that one. Well, that that's the problem. I got a feeling that Clip's going to know this one quicker than you, Chan. All but right. uh, I'm not the gonna bonus say it. one. The bonus uh, one. Uh, uh, all, right. all right, here we go. Next one. Chandler, this is yours. Do it again. Uh, is that Scooby Doo? You are correct, sir. <laughs> you know what I was going to say? <laughs> Tim the Toolman Tyler? Yeah. Say, oh, you prove it. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, but this is the original Scooby Doo sound. Ah, uh, all right. I would have got that wrong. So. All right. Here we go. So now it's three to one. Chandler, you're finally on the board. Ah, uh, comeback season. At baby. least we're getting these. These are way easier than last week. That was the first one I, I got. That I was even making it harder. Somewhat new. I really thought I was making it harder. All right. Last one for this first round. <laughs> Dumb and dumber. <laughs> yep. Most annoying sound in the world. You want to hear it? <laughs> Brownie points. What's the second most annoying sound in the world? Mockingbird? When they sing Mockingbird? <laughs> no. I don't know. When Jim Carrey bangs on the doorbell yeah. and then the lady yells at him. Wow. That was wow, a we high just ran. scoring first round. That You guys just ran through that round way quicker than I thought. That was easy peasy. Living squeezy. All right. Well, Chandler is now only just a point behind you. Three yeah, to two is your score. We got a ball score. game. We got ourselves a ball game. Big ball game. All right. We're on to round two. I, I'm, I'm really starting to question my choices here, but okay, here we go. Now, this is like last week. This is... Uh, <laughs> play Shall one, I play it again? Play it yeah. again. I, I want to say it's a gaming system. I, 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 that, I don't know. So I'm going to say... Atari? No, I'm going to say... Um, I don't know if Atari ever had a startup sale. Well, not a startup sale. Maybe just for the game. Like Dreamcast or something. I don't know. The answer is... That's the startup sound for Game Boy. Ah, oh, oh. hit it again. I had one. That is the startup sound hmm. for the Game Boy. I had a Game Boy. I don't remember that. I had a Game Boy. I even had a Game Boy backpack. <sighs> okay, dude, we get it. You're a rich kid. I'm a Game Boy. <laughs> you wear two different golf brands to work. All right. Sound two for this round. I mean, come on. Again, this is like Taylor Bay. I, even though I was not a huge fan of the show, I know what it Play is. Play it again. American Gladiators. Shall I play the full version? Because I did. I believe that is Beverly Hills 90210. You are correct. That's what I was going to say. Okay, I'm starring Mike I'm Schwartz. Trying, I'm trying to stump him, and I'm mad now. You, All right, you're stumping Chandler. I'm stumping Chandler, but I'm not stumping you, and this is really making me mad because last week was so wildly entertaining. I was trying to make it. But see, last, stumped us at one but point. see, this you're doing TV themes. You're doing like last week. It was those electronics and stuff oh, that no. were that were really good, but they were I couldn't I couldn't pull them. Right. These but are easy. TV themes. That's nah. like that's like my repertoire. I'm assuming you've got more I'm to mad come. Now. Yes. Here's the next. Bring time. them on. Okay. Um, so that's a it's a ringtone for. Are you looking for a company? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I had this. Everybody had this. Oh, I know it. I think I know it. Do you want to guess? Mm. I think I know it. Want me to play it again? Yeah, one more time. I've heard that sound many a time. I just I don't know what it's referencing. Shirley, show me Nokia. Damn. <laughs> yes, sir. Hmm. Last week was a fluke, folks. I am really mad at this right now. Last week, not indicative of the sound neighbor guesser that I am. 
<sighs> All right, next now. Oh, another one of these. Now these are tough. Because I don't know the names to all these. That's like before a movie or whatever. True. So, There's a movie studio. Um, do you want me to play it again? Please. Yeah, that's fine. I have a guess. Does anybody want to venture a guess? So, I have a guess. Um, probably, uh, DreamWorks. Uh, we might have had that last week. I don't know. That is incorrect. Chandler, you want to guess? We had Warner Brothers last week, so that's not it. Um, I don't know. It was TriStar. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't have got that. Yeah. All right, there you go, Shirley. Now you're starting to stump us. Which you've, have, you've but had I got a feeling Chandler. Yeah, well, I got a feeling Chandler. I mean, not Chandler, but uh, Clip is going to get this one. Probably within the first two seconds. I can Which name that tune in two seconds. <sighs> oh. oh, Inspector Gadget. Go ahead. Yeah. Well done, Chandler. True story. I had a bad dream about Inspector Gadget as a kid and was scared of him for the remainder of my life. Didn't you say it was your dad that you were scared my of? My dad was involved. I think he turned into Inspector Gadget and it like freaked <laughs> me out. So I couldn't watch the show or the movie or anything. I remember you telling me that story. Yeah. I used to love that show. So thanks, Shirley, for bringing back those memories. Oh, my gosh. I am sorry. You know, I, I didn't pick it up from the intro. I got it at the same time Chandler yeah. did. Chandler gets the point there. All right. So that's the end of round two. Pretty good tune if it didn't remind me of childhood trauma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So the score as it stands right now is five to three, clip in the lead. Good game. Let's take a break. Take we'll a break. come back and we'll finish the round. As we We've do go to third. break. As we do go to break, we have breaking news uh, out of college basketball. Tom Noy of the South Bend Tribune says, Source tells South Bend Tribune that Notre Dame coach Mike Bray will retire at the end of the season. So, Oh, wow. Uh, breaking news coming out of South Bend wow. and Notre Dame basketball. Mike Bray, a Coach K disciple. Well, let me give a shout-out to uh, the big man on campus, Jeff Nadeau. Let me find his tweet from uh, yesterday. He said... Keep this music going. Dead air. Well, not necessarily. I can't find it now. Something to the effect of Mike Bray will be stepping down within the next 24 hours. Credit me. <laughs> so uh, that was the first place. I, oh, here we go. January 17th. That was uh, two days ago. Although he said Notre Dame will be firing head basketball coach Mike Bray. This is said to be imminent in the next 24 hours. Please credit. Thanks. So he's not exactly right. No. But he did have uh, Mike Bray. So Mike Bray stepping down. Wow. He has uh, spent the last 23 seasons at Notre Dame. Yeah. They've been uh, down this year. We'll take a break. Come back. Round three of Name That Sound. Coming up when we return after this. Lindsey Gray here with Carolina Caliber. In 1960, my granddaddy started his firearm business right here in Eastern NC. Still family owned and operated, we have the area's largest selection for outdoor shooting sports and accessories and are one of the nation's top firearm dealers. At Carolina Caliber, we have everything you need from hunting, home defense, and personal protection, including a wide variety for ladies and youth. We buy, sell, and trade. It's a time-honored tradition. Visit us at Carolina Caliber on Fire Tower Road in Winterville. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is Amanda Houston. And when it came time to make the game-winning play for relaxation at our house, I made the right call to Jamie Lang and Carolina Hardscapes. Jamie and his team built the backyard oasis of our dreams with a beautiful custom paper patio, outdoor lighting, and fireplace. 
Make your backyard incredible and call Carolina Hardscapes today at 364-1201 or visit their showroom on Fire Tower Road across from Bostic Suck. Go Pirates! Flight by Yingling. It's the next generation of light beer. For those who don't follow trends, but craft them. Flight by Yingling is 12 ounces of uncompromised refreshment from America's oldest brewery. With only 2.6 grams of carbs and 95 calories, this is premium refreshment, six generations in the making. Don't just raise a glass, raise the bar. Flight by Yingling. Available wherever beer is sold. DG Yingling and Sun Incorporated. Pottsville, Pennsylvania. Please enjoy responsibly. If you wake up in the morning with a backache, feeling more tired than you did when you went to bed, you probably need a new mattress. And the best place to get that mattress is Factory Mattress. Hi, I'm Kirk Smith, General Manager. For more than 40 years, Factory Mattress has been Greenville and Wilson's local mattress dealer. We guarantee the lowest price on the area's best selection with over 50 models to choose from. No seconds or overruns, Factory Mattress offers only first quality direct from the manufacturer. Sealy Posture Peating, Beauty Rest, Stearns and Foster, and Temper Peating. The most highly trained sales associates with over 60 years of combined experience. Same as cash financing with zero interest, up to 48 months, and free local delivery. Face it, to have a good day, you've got to have a good night. So sleep better knowing you saved money at Factory Mattress, locally owned on Greenville Boulevard in Greenville, on Forest Hills Road in Wilson, on the web at FactoryMattressUSA.com, and a proud member of Pirates Supporting Pirates. Did you know time spent outdoors can help improve your children's health and bring balance to their life? The Outdoor Heritage Advisory Council invites you to join the Patch Program. This program is for any child under the age of 16 and includes activities like fishing, hunting, and hiking. These are just one of the many ways you can earn the exclusive patches from the Outdoor Heritage Council. For more information on how to sign up and get your adventure started, visit OutdoorHeritage.nc.gov. Be sure to check out David Price Construction for all of your commercial or custom residential renovation and building needs. Run by ECU alumni, David Price Construction specializes in commercial projects, maintenance on facilities, and large-scale residential renovations and additions. Proud to be voted the Remodeler of the Year by the Home Builders Association of Raleigh Wake County in 2018 and Best Business Commercial Remodel Project winner for 2020. David Price Construction, the proud ECU Home Services Partner. Hi, I'm Annalie Newhoff. And I'm Rob Campbell. And, and we, we are, are with, with Copy Pro. Pro. We have been locally owned and operated here in eastern North Carolina for almost 50 years. Copy Pro is the leader in office technology. Does your business struggle with keeping printing costs low or producing professional documents? Here at Copy Pro, total customer satisfaction is our number one priority. We have a variety of solutions to help reduce your printing expenses and make your business more productive. Call us today at 1-800-682-6558 or online at copypro.net. Copy Pro. We are the professional office systems people. Welcome aboard the pirate ship of fun. Pirate Radio. Prepare for the adventure of a lifetime. The voice of the pirate nation. You're listening to Hour 2 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by Beauty Bar Meta Spa. Do you want to get rid of wrinkles, tighten and lift your skin, smooth your skin texture, erase veins and brown spots and get rid of unwanted hair? Are you interested in Botox or filler? Visit BeautyBarMetaSpa.com to set up a free consultation. Now back to the show. Welcome back. Fifth Street Hardware Restaurant and Tap Room is your favorite place in downtown Greenville for lunch, dinner, or drinks with friends. They serve lunch and dinner Tuesday through Sunday plus brunch starting at 10 30 on Saturdays and Sundays you can follow fifth street hardware restaurant and tap room on Instagram for the latest events and specials on fifth street right beside the state theater now let's head back in to PRL here's clip all righty coming up five o'clock we will talk to Alec Burleson former pirate St. Louis Cardinal he will join us he'll be speaking at the ECU banquet coming up next Saturday also next Saturday, the Down East Baseball Pitching and Catching Clinic, and you can sign up. Uh, registration ends Tuesday, but you can contact Ryan Meadows uh, and get your kid involved in that. Going to be a great event. Hot Stove Banquet going on tonight. Dale Murphy coming to Greenville April 2nd. A lot of baseball-related things going on. 
in the community and surrounding parts. So exciting times. Looking forward to some pirate baseball less than a month away at Clark LeClaire Stadium. All right, we are playing Name That Sound, Shirley Rhodes. Uh, five to three is the score right now. Yep. I uh, have a slight lead over Chandler Honeycutt, but time for the all-important round three. This is the final round, plus I have a bonus sound at the end of the game. So, all right. Here we go for round three. Here's your first sound. I'm guessing by the... uh, little jig you're doing in your chair you know the answer to this you're guessing wrong <laughs> i don't chandler do you have any idea american gladiators <laughs> is that your standard <laughs> guess it's not bad it sounds like it could be it could it could very much um i'm gonna go walker texas ranger no but that's a pretty decent that's guess good. that is a decent <laughs> guess but you are way off <laughs> This is the theme to He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Wow. I mean, I was a huge He-Man guy. As a matter of fact, uh, you know that all the rage is these little mini figures, figurines. I forget what they're called. They're not the Funko Pops, but they're something else. And I got the He-Man and Masters of the Universe set for Christmas. And Sick brag. It is. Yep. Hashtag humble brag. Huge it is sitting, Yep. Sitting on my uh, mantle at my house. I want to say Masters of the Universe is the first movie I ever remember seeing in a movie theater. Mm. It was like mid-late 80s or whatever. Yeah. And I was a He-Man stan. And um, that was a scary movie for a child. I'm trying to remember. I'm pretty sure I think I, I saw it because for some reason I'm seeing Skeletor in my mind. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure. I don't think I saw it in the movie theater, though. I think I watched it, like, on cable somewhere. All so, right. Masters all right, of so the Universe. That, well done. That doesn't fit that show. It doesn't, but it's one of those kind of crazy off-the-wall uh, themes. That's why I was trying to go with instrumentals, because they tend to be a tad bit harder than most folks. All right. Let's move on. Score still holding at five to three. Jermaine says on YouTube, he says, come on, man. That's (laughs) He-Man. All right, Jermaine. Your comment was not Jermaine to this discussion. Oh. 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 Got him. Thank you. All right, here we go. Next sound. Another one of these. DreamWorks. Yes, sir. <laughs> I was like, sooner or later, somebody. I was like, y'all been using this. I was like, you've been saying DreamWorks. Were you about to say it? Yeah. <laughs> American Gladiator. Uh, I, I, you know what I thought of? Shrek. That's yeah. the, uh, I remember. Donkey. Right Donkey. Get out of me, swamp. <laughs> DreamWorks. All Teamwork right. makes the DreamWorks. Right. Finally. Six to three. Dang Clip it. starting to run away. I'm sorry, Chandler. I was trying to make this hard for him. He's a runner. I know. But with a 20-point bonus, again, this doesn't matter. But she said that you're going to get it before It's me. likely you're going to get it. And that's not good when the host is saying that. <laughs> yeah, I know. All right. But but I will say this. He may, he may get it, but he has to be absolutely on point with it. Okay. And I'll explain later. All right, here we go. Next one. Oh, Sega. Sonic. No, this is we. We. Damn it. Woohoo. That made me mad. We. We, 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 we. We, 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 we. It's we. We, 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 we. We, 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 we. It's we, we. It's we. I'm not going to lie. I played the hell out of some Wii tennis. I did. We played bowling, me and my friend all the time. Do you know how much Wii Tennis I played? I think I pulled several muscles playing that game. Dang All right. On. Well done, That Chandler. was too easy. Hit the beginning again. <laughs> Man, that makes me feel like a moron. Yeah, well, you can afford to feel like a moron when you got six points already. Moron of the month. <laughs> oh, yeah, that one. And the moron of the game goes to... 
the moron of the month. <laughs> Clip Brock. All right, here we go. Next one. Animaniacs. What? What's it called? Animaniacs. Animaniacs. Does it ring a bell? Yeah, yeah. American Gladiators. You're going to have to get in Chandler's era if he's going to participate in this I game. I know. I was try- Well, actually, I thought that that would be one, but... You've never he heard would- of Animaniacs? I guess that was... It was I mean, on that- the WB. Dub, 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 dub. Yeah. You ever heard of Live Golf? It's on the CW. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. This is the last sound for the round. Then, of course, you got the bonus sound. All right, last sound. What the hell is that? Ow. <laughs> Shall I play it again? The Tootsie Owl. <sighs> Twilight Zone? I don't know where to begin. Play, um, it, play it again. <sighs> you are absolutely going to kick yourself when you well you might i chandler might not i i got a feeling chandler does not know this at all but <laughs> shall i play it again one more time. see that the the point is chandler is that there's as hard as, as yes there's a point <laughs> um as hard as it is for you i'm really more trying to stump him because he's trying to make it too easy okay i, I don't know that would be the sound from Night Industries 2000, a.k.a. Kit. <laughs> what? Uh, nah, I see. I, I, I'm not Did gonna... you, you know, the red part that goes across? That's the yeah, sound that makes. Yeah. But that was even almost before my time. Like, I wasn't a Night Rider guy. Well, I stumped him on that one. I got him. Got one. him, Shirley. You I got, got him. I got him. I got the uh, theme song because they, they, uh, Buster Rhymes made a remix with it. Do you I remember know. that? Yes, I Fried did. up. All uh, right. Here's your bonus sound. <clears throat> and then we got to take a break because we got Alec Burleson waiting on us. Um, the bonus sound, you're probably going to get who is making this sound. But what I'm looking for is specifically what this sound is supposed to be. Okay, so the person is imitating something. By the way, Redbeard and Jermaine all got that. Way to go. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Charlie. Okay. So you're going to get who this person is probably almost immediately. Okay. But I need the answer is what is he mimicking? Okay. 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 All right. Name this sound. I think this is better for Chandler to guess. So <laughs> I've th- heard of this. Okay. Shall I play it again? Yeah. <laughs> okay, first of all, do you know who that is? This is pirate radio related. This is That's where I've heard it. Okay. Yes, this is pirate radio related. So you may guess who who it is. That that's it's not going to count against you. Shall I play it one more time? One more time. Okay. <laughs> so is this a pirate radio personality? That is yes. a person making that sound. Yes, so it's a pirate race radio personality. Meteor? No. Closer to the inner circle. But closer to this side of the glass. Oh, uh, Wes. Okay, that is Wes. So that is Wes. What, is, Wes. what, what is, in the world is Wes doing? What is Wes? What is the sound that Wes is making? He's imitating something. Hit it again. <laughs> trying to do the dial up thing? <laughs> it no. kind of sounds like that. But no. no. He's, What's he doing? He's imit- uh, You want to do it, Clip? Just to show you, I know the answer. Yes. Uh, he's imitating Pac Man, the game. He's trying to oh. sound like Pac Man. <laughs> but it came out sounding like. I love the toy 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 part. 
<laughs> and now after you heard, you know, when you played that, I heard the the laughter of Troy Dreyfus in the background. Yeah, that's why I said you would get who you would probably recognize the voice. Mm-hmm. But I needed to. The answer was what I was looking for was what was he imitating? My gosh! All so right, that was your bonus sound. Two okay. and zero. Oh. So you won twenty six to four. <laughs> Blow out. <laughs> nope. Seven four was the final. Oh, Twenty seven to four. Seven to four was the final. Oh man. I will have to go back into my archives and seriously try to I'll try instead of trying to The s- problem is you're going too far back in the archives. Yeah. You need I to am. come this way on the timeline. Maybe hit some stuff from Chandler's childhood that I wouldn't know. And that you don't know. That's the problem. Well, you I coming do. coming up with questions because, like, sports trivia, I come up with stuff that I kind of know, you know? Right. It's hard to come up with stuff you don't know. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But anyway. Well, if we bring it back, I still have more. I want to bring it back. Okay. Bring it back. Bring it back. Uh, Chris Floyd said, Shirley, we need to consult before next game. You're giving the game to Clip. I will get with Chris on that. Yeah. Chris can be like your uh, consultant, stage manager, or like, yeah, you know, the producer of the. Uh, what name is that it? Sound. What is it that the um, that the people on Jeopardy use when they have a question about whether or not uh, a person's answer? That there's a specific name for it, and I can't think of it. You know what I'm talking about? Like if somebody answers a question or answers a clue, and they're not sure if they should give it to them or not, and they have to go and consult judges. Ma- judges. Is that it? Yeah, it was the judges. <laughs> judges. All right, let's take a break. <laughs> Alec Burleson joins us when we return on Pirate Radio Live after this. Here with Jeff Stein at Brown & Wood. Jeff, how can you help people with service in 2023? We continue to offer free pickup and drop-off for the customers, and our customers' time is valuable. So we've added three additional express lube technicians to reduce wait time. That's our number one goal for 2023. And please don't forget, we service all makes and models. We're voted number one in Greenville by the customer. Come see us at 329 Southwest Greenville Boulevard. Brown & Wood, four brands, three generations, two rooftops, and one goal to make sure you leave a happy customer. Do you want to get rid of wrinkles, tighten and lift your skin, smooth your skin texture, erase veins and brown spots, get rid of unwanted hair and under eye fat pads? Are you interested in Botox or filler? Contact the licensed professionals at Beauty Bar Medispa for a free consultation and ask about our newest technologies and treatments. Learn more at BeautyBarMedispa.com. Red Banks Road, Greenville. Enjoy your visit, love your transformation, and go Pirates! Hello, Eastern North Carolina. If you're looking for a great place to work with competitive pay and a multitude of advancement opportunities, Pitt County Schools is hiring. We employ over 3,500 people, and we're one of the largest employers in our community and region. Pitt County Schools is currently seeking teachers, bus drivers, school nutrition personnel, facility staff, custodians, clerical staff, and more. We offer advanced leadership opportunities for our educators and competitive pay for our skilled labor. Force. Come work for a diverse, thriving school system and be an important part of ensuring success for the students of Pitt County who are the future of Eastern North Carolina. To fill out an application, visit our website today at pittschools.org. That's pittschools.org. And remember, education is truly a team effort. Pitt County Schools, live and lead. the best burgers around everyone loves a thick juicy and fresh burger tiebreakers in greenville plus the all-new tiebreakers in winterville do real burgers better than anybody so don't just go to any burger themed restaurant chain it's time to break the chain and eat local tiebreakers real burgers at its best everybody loves burgers With over 30 locations across North Carolina and Southeastern Virginia, Quality Equipment is your local John Deere dealer where you'll find everything you need for your next project. Our complete lineup of John Deere lawn and garden, agricultural and commercial worksite equipment comes with years of experience, expertise, and dedication. We know what it takes to get it done right. 
Stop by today or visit us online at qualityequip.com. I'm Donald Stocks, owner of Pip Marketing Science Print. We are your one-stop shop for just about anything printed. If we're not your go-to printer, please give us a call at 355-1636. We have over 80 five-star Google reviews and want you to be our next more than satisfied and well-pleased customer. Check us out at growitpip.com or stop in to see us at 3185 Mosley Drive in Greenville. Pip, where business goes to grow. You've had your new computer a few years now, but lately it's been running super slow, acting strange, and you're worried about viruses and losing data. This is driving me mad! Let the experts at University PC Care in Greenville and Newburn professionally diagnose your Mac or PC to see what's really going on. They'll determine the root cause and not just symptoms, so you don't waste money fixing the wrong issues. Call 252-558-1280 for in-store or remote service, or make an appointment online at universitypccare.com. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, 1250 at 92.7 FM Greenville, WDLX Washington, 930 at 104.1 FM Washington. You're listening to Hour 3 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by Bud Light. Reminding pirate fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. Bud Light, the official beer of the ECU Pirates and proudly distributed by Carolina Eagle Distributing since 1989. Now, back to the show. Welcome back to the show and be sure to visit one of ECU graduate Brandon Tate's U.S. Cellular locations and experience the highest standard of customer service. The purpose of the Atlantic Wireless Store experience is to inform, illuminate, and inspire. Find the location near you at AtlanticWireless.com. Atlantic Wireless, we be go, uh, excuse me, we go beyond the call. Now let's head back in to PRL. Here's Clip. All righty, back with your Pirate Radio Live. Chandler, can you name this sound? That is, Ooh, you suck. That's people listening to you play. Name that sound. <laughs> I, thought that was, I thought that was pretty good. You didn't like it? Okay. Chandler didn't appreciate that. Uh, we will once again suit it up and uh, play Name That Sound next Thursday. Coming up on Pirate Radio Live, uh, surely permitting. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Chandler, you in? Sure. Why right. not? All I'm right. not a quitter. That's what I like. Well, I like several things about you. Blue collar, put in the work. I asked you to do something. What did you do? I did it. Before I even finished giving my demands, you had it ready to go. The moron of the month. It's certainly not Chandler Honeycutt. It's not me. <laughs> it is not me. Definitely not Chandler Honeycutt. All right, let's head out to the Pit Electric Live Line. Joining us, former Pirate Great. You saw him with the uh, St. Louis Cardinals in 2022. He is Alec Burleson joining us. Alec, welcome back to Pirate Radio. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. Excited to be back. Yes, sir. Thanks so much for uh, joining us today. You'll be the upcoming speaker at the ECU Baseball Banquet coming up uh next saturday so uh, i know uh, we're excited about that we'll talk about that but alec first of all tell us uh, what you're up to this off season what are you doing uh currently as we talk to you uh i'm in high point right now um just working out you know getting my uh my off season training in um you know starting to ramp things up as we move closer to spring training but um actually just got an apartment down in greenville so i'll be down there um i'll move down the friday before the banquet so i'm excited about that awesome stuff uh we'll be glad to have you back in this neck of the woods and uh alec major major league uh, debut in 2022 and and man uh what a whirlwind it was we had a, a great time following you i know you uh you saw all the love from the pirate nation around here but uh, I, I don't know. Can can you put it into words now that you've had some time to think about it? Uh, you know, fulfilling that dream, making Major League Baseball, and and not just that, but being productive up there. What was that experience like for you? Yeah, I mean, like you said, it's tough to put into words. Um, I mean, it, it was exciting for sure. It was definitely unexpected. Um, but 
you know, I got, I, got, I was fortunate enough to be up there for a lot of um, a lot of great, you know, accomplishments in, in within Cardinal history. You got Albert Pujols with 700 home runs, um, Adam Wainwright with, uh, and uh, Yadier Molina breaking the battery record, uh, MVP season from Paul Goldschmidt. So I mean, I was fortunate to be up there, um, you know, during all that stuff, and then even clinching the division. So um, you know, a lot of a lot of stuff that. You know, most guys can't say they were part of, and and it was in my first year, so it was uh, it was amazing. I mean, like you said, like I said, I can't really you know put it into words. You can't really describe it, but um, it, I mean, you work for it your whole life, and to finally get there, and um, but they, I mean, you know, they say it's tough to get there, but it's harder to stay up there. So that's kind of my, you know, go, going into spring training. All right, Allie Burleson joining us, Pit Electric Live Line. That it was really cool to see uh, all those things happening around you there in st louis and to see what was happening with you alec because you get up there and you have to have that confidence that you belong but to actually do it to to be seeing pitches to start hitting to start uh getting extra base hits i mean what, what was that feeling like it had to be gratifying for you to say okay uh, maybe I, I do belong here at this level yeah i, I think you know, and I think I can kind of speak for everybody that's kind of made made their debut. You know, you're a little starstruck when you get there, and especially the locker room I was in with, uh, you know, some of the big names that were there. Um, but, yeah, I, I think throughout my, you know, month and a half, two months, however long I was up there, you know, I think I think I kind of ran into a little bit of bad luck as far as, far as uh, being at the plate. Um, you know, it took me a while to get my first hit, but before that, you know, I was lining out to people, so I was – I was pretty happy with how I, you know, did up there in the short short amount of time I had. But, um, you know, I'm looking to kind of build on that. And, uh, but yeah, like, like you said, you know, just being there was just, you know, awesome in and of itself. And then, you know, being able to play and, um, you know, be in the same lineup as some of those names was unbelievable. Allie Burleson joining us. And, yeah, hitting behind Albert Pujols in a historic year. And you mentioned uh, Wainwright, Molina, uh, Goldschmidt. So I, I wanted to ask you, you know, if you had any wow moments, any kind of starstruck moments. Well, you had enough right there on your own team that you didn't have to worry about other guys around the league. But were there any other examples of that, Alec, where you're like, wow, I'm, I'm on the same field as, as fill in the blank here? Um. I mean, there, there were a lot of great guys. I mean, obviously, you know, I, I was up there for a short amount of time, like I said. and um, But, you know, I was fortunate enough to, to go out to California and play, um, play in Dodger Stadium and yeah. play the Padres. And, um, you know, that, that, was, that was pretty cool. I got to watch Kershaw pitch in person. Um, you know, I got to watch, uh, you know, Blake Snell pitch and, and shove it up our butts a little bit. But, um, <laughs> you know, I got, I got to see a lot of big names throw and e- even hit off of them. Um, you know, and, and then you know, just being in Bush Stadium. I mean, that place sells out every night, whether it's a whether it's a Saturday night or it's a, a Tuesday at, at a day game. So I mean, it, it's it's pretty awesome to play in front of those fans, and um, you know, you you don't you don't get that everywhere uh, as far as the big leagues go, and um, you know, just fortunate enough to have the opportunity to play there. Alec Burleson joining us, Pit Electric Live Line here on Pirate Radio Live. Alec, could you take us back to when you're just absolutely raking in the minors? And we're all biased around here, of course, and we're seeing your numbers and looking at your box score every day and talking about it and saying, you know, why, what's it going to take for this guy to get called up? And, and in that case, it's not necessarily about you. It's about what the Cardinals have, the roster, who's healthy, who's hitting, all that. But when you are – going three for four every night just about in minor league baseball is that in the back of your head like you know am i getting the call up I, you, you have to kind of focus on uh what you know be where your feet are i guess the phrase is but how much were you kind of thinking about okay when am i gonna get gonna get that call yeah it, it was a lot easier at the beginning um to kind of you know be like all right i'm here i'm gonna play the best i can um and, and not really worry about you know, getting called up because I knew, um, you know, I knew it was going to happen at some point. Uh, I wasn't sure. I didn't know it was going to be last year. Uh, I didn't know when it was going to be. But, um, yeah, at the beginning of the year, it was pretty easy just to go out and play. And then, um, you know, I started seeing guys kind of getting called up in front of me. And, you know, I was extremely happy for them. And, I mean, they had a little bit more time than me. They were, I, I would say they were a little bit more ready than me at the time. And then, um, you know, as the season went on, I just kept, you know, kept hitting, kept, doing what I needed to do. And then, um, you know, I started seeing more guys getting called up, more guys getting called up. Uh, 
you know, some outfielders going down and they were calling up other guys. And, um, so it, it, it got a little frustrating, but it wasn't something that I was focused on. Um, you know, I had some conversations with, with some front office people and, um, you know, that was kind of reassuring and, um, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I, I would say it's definitely hard to, to not think about it. Um, but as, as far as letting it affect my game, I think I did a pretty good job of that. Um, you know, not letting it, you know, bring, bring what I had, uh, you know, accomplished down. Like it, it, it was, uh, it was definitely hard, but you know, I think I managed it pretty well. And then, Alec, you, you you know, you're starting to, to hit pretty good. You're a part of the team, and uh, you don't make that wild card roster, that playoff roster. And, I mean, you were, like, literally next man off. So uh, what was that like for you as you uh, you kind of went through your first season, at least partial season there, and, and you're left off that playoff roster? Uh, did You know, did, were you thinking you had a shot there or, or were going to make it? What was that like? Yeah, thanks for bringing that up, Cliff. Um, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, no, no, it, it wasn't. You know, I, I was kind of – obviously you want to make the playoff roster, and obviously that's something you strive for. And, um, you know, especially me in my situation. And, um, you know, it just came down to what the team needed. They needed an extra infielder. Um, you know, it, right, when, right when I got told I didn't make the playoff roster, they had made that decision literally as I was going into the office, the people – with uh, Ollie, our manager, and a couple other coaches, they had literally just made that decision as I was walking in. So it's kind hmm. of last last second thing, and um, you know, some some guys you know wanted me on the roster, but they you know they ultimately made the decision of they needed an extra middle infielder, um, and that's just what they needed at the time. I think you know I I think we were kind of limited in in, in that area, and they just wanted an extra one, so that. Um, you know, it is what it is. I, you know, I, I was probably disappointed for, you know, maybe an hour or so afterwards. You know, I, I was, you know, hope, hoping to make it. But, you know, I was fortunate enough to still be in the dugout, still be able to experience uh, playoff baseball. Obviously, you know, I'm in my jersey, but I'm in my turf. So like, I don't have my cleats on. You know, I'm not yeah. swinging in and that. But, you know, I still got to experience it and, um, you know, see what playoff baseball is like. And um, so – yeah, I think I was a little disappointed, but I was also kind of grateful to, um, you know, be able to sit back and kind of experience it so I, you know, know what to expect in the coming years. Alec Burleson joining us, Pit Electric Live Line. We saw you play multiple positions here, uh, of course, including on the mound at East Carolina. You've settled in now to your outfield position, Alec, and we've seen you flash the leather, several highlights uh, in minor league baseball and uh, the majors as well. So how comfortable are you there, Alec, uh, playing in the field? And, and that's kind of a big part of, you know, if you're going to uh, be able to, to stay up and have success in major league baseball, you've obviously uh, put a lot of work in to your defense. Yeah, I think that that was kind of, um, you know, my big focus going into last year. Um, you know, I wanted to, to improve. Um, and, and I'm sure everybody listening in knows I'm not the biggest speed guy. So, being <laughs> in the outfield, you know, I have to kind of make up for that with, with reads and jumps and um, you kind of knowing the hitter and feel like I, you know, obviously didn't master it, but I got better with that last year. And then, um, you know, once I got to the big league, you know, the game speeds up a little bit, but I actually, you know, got to go home for a little bit as far as position wise. And I played a good amount of first base in the big leagues, which I had never, I think I played maybe like three or four innings in double A and 21 at first base. So, um, you know, that was, that was fun. And, uh, you know, kind of going into this year, that's kind of what, what I'm looking as my role to be, at, you know, to start with, uh, you know, kind of a utility corner outfielder first base. So I can give some of those vets, um, some off days and you know that, that'll get me in the lineup and um, you know that's kind of the the role I'm expecting to play so uh, you know some get get more ground balls I haven't taken too many ground balls in the past few years so I've been yeah. doing that um, more and more so because um, they you know they, they put me at first base for a reason so I think that's kind of what their plan is and that's kind of I think we're kind of on the same page there well, the million-dollar question, Alec, is uh, where will you begin your 2023 baseball season? Is it in St. Louis? Is it in Memphis? Is it to be determined? Uh, what, what do you know right now? Yeah, it's to be determined. I mean, I think it'll all depend on, um, you know, how they want the roster to look, uh, how, how I perform in spring training. Obviously, I'm going to have 
some good opportunities with the with the WBC and a lot of those guys being gone. I think we have, um, you know, 11 or 12 guys just from the Cardinals organization playing in it. Um, so that'll give give me and a lot of the young guys opportunity to kind of flash what we can do and, um, you know, push for a roster spot. So I think that's where my focus is right now is just going to spring training ready to go. And, um, you know, ho- hopefully, hopefully I make the – the big league roster, like obviously that's the ultimate goal, but um, you know that'll all depend on how I do and kind of what the team needs. Had forgotten about the World Baseball Classic that'll begin on Wednesday, March eighth, and wrapping up Tuesday, March twenty first. Coming up next Saturday, Alec Burleson will be speaking uh, at the ECU baseball banquet. So, <clears throat> Alec, you go from player in the seats a few years ago to speaker. So. How are you uh, handling that role? I, I've talked to some guys who are former players that went on to speak at this thing who are more nervous about talking than they are, you know, facing a 99-mile-per-hour cut fastball. So, like, well, what's your uh, comfort level talking to a, a group of folks, Alec? Yeah, I mean, it's it's it's, it's not the most comfortable thing, I'll say. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I just look forward to being there and, and, and meeting the guys. Obviously, I haven't been around. Um, you know, this off season to kind of get to know the guys and see the fans and stuff. Um, you know, I've been practicing every day, every morning I drive to, uh, I drive to workouts. I practice my speech. So I'm going to try and go up there with, uh, nice. no piece of paper and just kind of, uh, you know, wing it and, uh, tell some stories and, um, stuff like that. But I'm excited to, uh, to kind of give back, I guess, you know, I've, I've, sp- I've actually spoken at it before, um, uh, you know, as a player. So I kind of have a little bit of experience, and I've gotten, uh, you know, a little bit of experience in my time in the in at the professional level with speaking in front of people and stuff like that. So I think it'll be all right. You know, I'll, I'll definitely be a little nervous when I get up there and, and see all the people in front of me, but um, you know, I'm, I'm excited to to be there and, and see some faces. Yeah, it'll be awesome to have you back and Alec. And, you know, this is kind of a tough one, probably, but is there one or two things you can think of that? You kind of apply day to day, and and when you're when you're hitting with the Cardinals, or or even in minor league baseball, that you took from ECU baseball, from Cliff Godwin, things that you still kind of apply to your baseball life today. Any, anything come to mind for you? Yeah, I, I think you know, as a hitter, um, <clears throat> I, I I would say I'm basically the same hitter as I was at East Carolina. I feel like you know I've obviously put on strength as far as um you know having to lift as a pitcher when i was at east carolina so i wasn't able to do you know certain movements and stuff that would allow me to be stronger as a hitter but now i'm able to do those and um but i i think my approach my uh you know my game plan my swing it's all pretty much the same from east carolina maybe a couple tweaks obviously but um you know i, I still do a two-strike approach that coach godwin uh preaches there and um, you know, it, a lot of the stuff, a lot of the stuff that I learned at East Carolina is, is you know, geek. a lot of guys try and reinvent the wheel, um, when it comes to baseball swings or pitching and stuff like that. And, um, you know, it's the same game, whether you're at East Carolina in the big leagues, obviously, obviously talent's a little bit better. Um, but it, it's the same game and, uh, there was no, there's no sense in me changing anything from, you know what I had success at, so I, I would say, you know, as a hitter, I'm basically the same hitter, um, with a with a few minor tweaks that have either allowed me to have a little bit more power or, you know, catch up to a hundred mile an hour fastball or anything like that. So, Alec Burleson joining us, Alec, as you you make that move from the the minors to the majors, probably things we don't think about that there's certainly not little things, but like travel and meals and just lifestyle. You know, how how big of a jump, uh, how big of a difference is that as you move up the levels and, and finally make it to Major League Baseball? Yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, night and day different. Um, as far as travel goes, you know, you're you're traveling after a game. Um, you know, in the big leagues, you're jumping on, you're jumping on a, a private plane and it's just you and the guys and um, you're, you're there the night before the game. Well, you just played a game that day, and you're there the night the night before, and um, you know the food. They have we have chefs, and you're you're having three or four meals a day, different meals, and um, you know compared to compared to the minor leagues, you know you're you're up at 
4 a.m. to catch a flight um, on your off day. So, I mean, you don't really even have an off day. You're up at 4 a.m. catching a flight or you're on a bus or whatnot. So, um, yeah, those things are, are definitely night and day. And, um, you know, as far as sleep and recovery goes, I mean, all that stuff contributes to that. Um, you know, if you can if you can get there the night before a game and get a good night's rest, you're definitely going to perform, perform better. Um, so, yeah, I, I would say it's, it's worth staying in the big leagues for sure, just for those reasons. Obviously, you have the baseball, but, I mean, just for those reasons, it's worth it. Alec Burleson joining us. Burley, before we let you go, uh, for the Pirate fans tuned in, uh, let's give them uh, some some fan service here. Your your all-time uh, favorite moments at East Carolina. When I ask you that, what uh, moments come to mind for you? Yeah, I think the, the 2019 uh, Greenville Regional, um, you know, that that's the first thing that pops in mind, um, you know, Went, losing the first game in, in 19 in that regional and then playing four games in two days, uh, you know, running on fumes, having to start a game, you know, then playing the outfield and hitting and stuff. And that – it was a grind, but it was fun. Just that whole 2019 uh, season was fun um, with those guys. And, um, you know, we worked worked so hard. And I, I know I kind of told this story before, but I think, you know, we started out rough that year. Um Started out rough, not, not rough, but I mean we lost some games we shouldn't have, and um, you know we had we had some heart to hearts going into uh, I think it was Ole Miss I think on the week on the midweek we had some heart to hearts and um, you know that kind of turned our season around, but um, you know and obviously we didn't do what we wanted to do in Louisville, but just that whole year was a lot of fun to watch you know some of those guys just get better and better, get drafted at the end of the year, and um, you know that was. That, that, that was pretty amazing. And, Alec, what was it like uh, watching and not being able to help uh, East Carolina host a super regional so close uh, to get into Omaha and uh, Texas knocks off East Carolina in the Greenville Super Regional. But, man, what a uh, what a scene at Clark LeClaire last year, and uh, I know you were you were tuned into those. Oh, for sure. It was, it was amazing to watch. I, was, I, I think I had it on the, the locker room TV um, in uh, Memphis, I remember, and – um, you know, all those guys are pulling for the Pirates. And, um, you know, it was just amazing to watch those guys. And, and, and I, I like to say that, you know, obviously Coach Godwin and, and um, when he was with Coach LeClaire, and they, they kind of built that foundation. But I feel like, um, you know, me and my group from about, I guess, 2018, when we got there, we kind of, you know, helped build that foundation of where East Carolina baseball is today. And that that's an uh, a tribute to you know all the guys that that I came in with you know the guys that were there before and uh, you know Coach Godwin so you know I like to say I had a little part in that obviously I wasn't on the field helping but I feel like you know we kind of set that foundation and set the uh, set the bar really high for East Carolina and um, you know so, well one day I know I know fans are fans are maybe tired of hearing it but one day the Pirates are going to make it to Omaha and it's going to be bittersweet and um, you know that that whole that whole place is going to be filled with purple and gold, and it's going to be amazing to watch. No doubt about it. Alec Burleson joining us today on Pirate Radio Live. Alec, great to catch up with you, man. I know folks are looking forward to seeing uh, you around these parts coming up soon, and hearing you and watching you speak at the banquet coming up next Saturday. But we appreciate a few minutes of your time. Always great to talk with you, man. And uh, we'll catch up when you get here to Greenville. How about that? No doubt, no doubt. I'll see you guys then. Alec Burleson, Pirate Great, joining us on the Pit Electric Live Line. And uh, Shirley Rhodes does an awesome job keeping up with where everybody is in the minors, how they're playing, what they're doing, uh, and, and giving those numbers out. We do that during the baseball season here on Pirate Radio Live. And we followed Alec a long, long time. Uh, seemingly, uh, he, he, he certainly there have been guys in the minor leagues longer than Alec Burleson, but the way he was hitting – we just felt like for months and months that his number, his name could be called any day, and it finally was and was able to close out the regular season with the Cardinals. And now he hopes to have a big spring training with St. Louis and who knows, maybe make the opening day roster for the Cardinals this year. All right, let's open up the booty bag. Booty, 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 booty everywhere. Booty, 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 booty everywhere. 317 12.50. Shirley, what are we giving away today? 
Well, i got to turn my mic on first. A $15 gift card to A.J. McMurphy. All right. And what caller are we looking for? I'm going to go with lucky number seven today. Caller seven, 317-1250. We're back with Brett Kennedy, WCTI 12, talking local sports, ECU, and his Kansas City Chiefs when we return after this. There's nothing more important than protecting your family. Fire ants can cause painful allergic reactions and even death. Protect your loved ones at home where you should feel the safest. Visit PestTechAgreenville.com to learn of our once-a-year treatment to guarantee you stay fire ant free. Tested and proven effective by your Eastern North Carolina exterminating professionals at PestTech of Greenville. Mention the crying baby for an extra 10% off. America's favorite light beer, Bud Light, is also the official beer of the ECU Pirates. When planning your fun times with family and friends, be sure to pick up some Bud Light at your favorite retailer. Bud Light carefully brews their beer to be perfect for anywhere there's fun. Because when there's fun, Bud Light is there. Always have fun, Pirate Nation, and always stay in the game and drink responsibly. Bud Light, the official beer of the ECU Pirates, and proudly distributed by Carolina Eagle Distributing since 1989. Go Pirates! Be sure to check out David Price Construction for all of your commercial or custom residential renovation and building needs. Run by ECU alumni, David Price Construction specializes in commercial projects, maintenance on facilities, and large-scale residential renovations and additions. Proud to be voted the Remodeler of the Year by the Home Builders Association of Raleigh Wake County in 2018 and Best Business Commercial Remodel Project winner for 2020. David Price Construction, the proud ECU Home Services Partner. Add some sparkle and style to your home and save at Bostick Sug Furniture. Give your home a new look in the new year with beautiful new furniture. Right now, get a Bostick Sug first time ever offer with three ways to save. One, get a sales tax discount on any purchase. Two, get a $100 in MasterCard rewards cards for every $1,000 you spend. And finally, get six months special financing. So add some sparkle and style to your home with a little help from Bostick Sug Furniture. East Coast Grading and Utilities is your source for clearing, hauling dirt, and concrete work. East Coast Grading and Utilities handles all sewer and water issues as well. I'm David Vaughn. Whether it's putting in a new subdivision or helping you with any and all of your drainage problems, I can get the job done. Call me at 531-7494. No job is too big or too small. East Coast Grading and Utilities. Friends helping friends. 531-7494. For East Coast Grading and Utilities utilities. Winslow's is now Fifth Street Hardware Restaurant and Tap Room. With a brand new look, Fifth Street Hardware also has a new menu and serving lunch and dinner every Tuesday through Sunday and brunch starting at 1030 on Sundays. What else is new? Well, they have poker every Tuesday night, trivia Wednesday with DJ Captain Morgan, and on Friday and Saturday nights, they have live music open till 2 a.m. serving light appetizers all night long. New look, new name, same location on Fifth Street. Follow them on Facebook and Instagram for more specials. Fifth Street Hardware Restaurant and Tap Room. Russell's Clothing in downtown Washington is celebrating 40 years in business. That means big savings for you on your favorite men's and women's clothing and accessories. As you would expect, Rhonda has slashed prices 40% on select merchandise. Outerwear, slacks, assorted sportswear, and shoes for the men. Dresses, sweaters, blouses, and outerwear for the ladies. Celebrate 40 years with us and save 40% while it lasts. We're here because of you, and we thank you, our friends and customers at Russell's Clothing in downtown Washington. Hi, I'm Annalie Newhoff. And I'm Rob Campbell. And, and we, we are, are with, with Copy Pro. Pro. We have been locally owned and operated here in eastern North Carolina for almost 50 years. Copy Pro is the leader in office technology. Does your business struggle with keeping printing costs low or producing professional documents? Here at Copy Pro, total customer satisfaction is our number one priority. We have a variety of solutions to help reduce your printing expenses and make your business more productive. Call us today at 1-800-682-6558 or online at copypro.net. Copy Pro. We are the professional office systems people. Pirate radio sounds different. Difference is good. You are all the same. You'll be ashamed. Because different is good. Oh, yeah. Pirate. Pirate radio.
You're listening to Hour 3 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by Bud Light. Reminding pirate fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. Bud Light, the official beer of the ECU Pirates and proudly distributed by Carolina Eagle Distributing since 1989. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Brownie Wood is your home of the best selection of GMC Cadillac, Buick, and Mazda in eastern North Carolina since 1937. Shop their entire inventory online at brownandwoodauto.com or visit them on Greenville Boulevard. Brown and Wood, Greenville's number one dealership and the home of the lifetime powertrain warranty. And congratulations to Eric Mazell of Greenville. Picked up a $15 gift card to AJ's. The best place in Greenville to unwind after work and have fun is AJ's. They have daily food and drink specials and an awesome patio. And there's something for everyone every weeknight, including sports trivia on Wednesday nights with our very own Clip Rock. And they have live music every Friday and Saturday with no cover and brunch every Sunday. Make today an AJ's day. Now let's head back into PRL. Here's Clip. All righty, back with you here on Pirate Radio Live. Before we get to break, Kennedy, it's time to look at the YouTube feed and see what Robert Skipper has said during today's show. <clears throat> you ready? Everybody ready? All right. Robert Skipper says, hey. Yo, Chandler is a good fellow. Previews are out of control. Looky here. No, he ain't. Ryan has a good barber. I share in the bald experience. Good job, Clip. Hey, yo, <laughs> Chandler, W-Y-A, cuzzy. Let Chandler in dar. Yeah. All right, that is Robert Skipper's comments uh, on YouTube today. Wow. Another banner day for I, Robert. Well, I appreciate him saying that I'm a good fella. Yeah. And uh, Thank you for saying I did a good job too, Robert. And thank you for wondering where I was at. I'm right here. I ain't going nowhere. Cuzzy. Cuzzy. Looky here. Get down from dar. <laughs> I, I mean, what am today. I, chopped liver over here? Robert, <laughs> give Shirley something. Good, bad, something. I mean, for, for crying out loud, get, I am part of the show, you know. And can we get a get uh, get down from there? Robert Skipper. Uh, good stuff on YouTube today. All right, let's head out to the Pit Electric Live line. Joining us now, Brett Kennedy, WCTI 12 Sports. He joins us here on Pirate Radio Live. Brett, how you doing, man? It's been a minute, Cliff. <laughs> um, I'm, doing, uh, I'm doing all right. How have you been? Doing good. Happy New Year to you, I guess. I haven't talked to you in a while. Uh, but we, we've talked to you this time of year because your Chiefs are always in the playoffs and uh, of recent years, the last half decade or whatever, have been a contender uh, to win the Super Bowl. So I want to talk about that. We'll also talk about what you're covering here locally, some ECU athletics. And we'll kind of start there, Brett. Uh, what what uh, have you been out shooting lately and uh, covering in high school sports? A lot of hoops, I would imagine. Yeah, a lot of a lot of high school hoops. Uh, a lot of a lot of Martin Luther King Jr. tournaments this past weekend. I went to the the Brandon Ingram uh, Invitational in Kenton, which was wild. Uh, got to do some uh, some big time stories all day there. Uh, a lot of Kenton uh, references there. I mean, you you got Westover that was playing in the tournament. They were coached by uh, former Kinston head coach George Stackhouse, the distant cousin, cousin of Jerry Stackhouse, so I caught up with him. We ran a story on that earlier in the week, as well as I ended up talking to Woodbury Forest head coach, who was playing in the tournament. Their head coach is Craig Dawson, who uh, former Wake Forest player and Kinston's all-time leading scorer, um, so it was nice catching up with him. We're running a story on that this week as well. And then I got to see Kinston take on uh, Goldsboro last week. That was a great game, packed house, uh, great environment there. And then Monday, I went to Farmville Central's um, MLK tournament all day long there. Saw a great game with Riverside and Washington go down to, right down the wire. Riverside came out with a great uh, great finish there. And then Farmville Central go up against first flight through three quarters. Farmville Central boys uh, looked like they had seen their match, but Farmville pulled away. In the fourth quarter, that was a great game as well. And then later in the week, again, Riverside taking on Washington County tonight for boys basketball. That's going to be a great game. And then I was thinking of going to a great women's game tomorrow. Uh, 
East Carteret hosting Southside, two of the top scorers in the state, Tanzania Locklear from East Carteret, taking on Kanaya O'Neill of Southside. Uh, Tanzania Locklear just just scored 1,000 points uh, last week, so I'm going to interview her, catch up with her, and uh, we'll have a story on that. So, yeah, a lot going on for sure. Brett Kennedy, WCTI 12, covering a lot of high school hoops. We'll have some ECU basketball, too. Follow in Menchie's Coliseum coming up on Tuesday, Brett. And uh, life without Javon Small has not gone well for the Pirates thus far. Uh, two straight double-digit losses without Small in the lineup and was banged up in that loss to Cincinnati where uh, the Pirates were hammered by the Bearcats last Wednesday. So East Carolina now five straight losses after starting one and one in league play. The schedule for AAC terms is, is pretty light coming up with Tulsa, Wichita State, who you already beat, South Florida, SMU. But uh, the problem for the Pirates right now, I don't know if there's anybody on that schedule they can beat if uh, Javon Small's not in the lineup and if they're not fully healthy. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I went to the game against South Florida this past Sunday, and you could tell that there was just something missing uh, from that offense scoring-wise. You're missing one of your best scorers, Javon Small, and um, you got to try to find guys to uh, to pick up the slack, uh, whether that be Caleb Caleb LeCount, uh, yeah, Caleb LeCount, or um, I mean, you got to have uh, you got to have just guys like R.J. Felton step up his play a little bit more. Uh, Quentin DeBunje looked good uh, this past weekend, but you're going to just need some guys to step up in that regard and 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 play more minutes. And um, and and they they did say that uh, Small is going to be out for the foreseeable future. Mike Schwartz came out and said that. So again, every team you deal with adversity, and this Pirates team that's that's some big time adversity. Now you're missing one of your big time scorers, but. Uh, you've got some home games coming up that'll help uh, being at home, but uh, you, you've got to you've got to also deliver because the last home game ECU played, uh, actually the last two that they have played at home, last three, <laughs> last three games at home they have lost. Yeah. So they they have to try to find some some other scoring inputs from uh, from different players. One positive going on at Menji's right now is Kim McNeil's Pirates. They win again last night, 13 and 6 overall, 4 and 2 in conference play. That's a really good number. 9 and 2 at Menji's Coliseum. A, a really good number. They'll be back in action on the road Saturday at Wichita State back home next Wednesday at 6 o'clock. But coming off a win last night over Cincinnati, and uh, Kim McNeil, um, you know, has, has tried to build this program, has not seen the wins uh, in her first few seasons here, but finally starting to see them this year, Brett. Yeah, it's uh, and it's good to see. I mean, this, there's just there's some excitement. There's a different vibe around this Pirates team this year, and um, they're they're getting <sighs> – I mean, Danae McNeil has been playing lights out basketball uh, the last couple weeks, as has Farmville Central alum and freshman Amaya Joyner cranking out double doubles left and right. She had a double double the other night as well, 18 points, 10 rebounds. It's been great to see her uh, develop as the season has gone on. But you're right, this has been just a different vibe around this Pirates team. Um, they're they're four and two in conference play, thirteen and six overall. Uh, it, it's it's good to see because just the last couple of years, this women's team at ECU has just not been productive, and it's great to see Kim McNeil is such a great, highly uh, motivating coach, and it's good to see her team uh, finally come out on the winning end and, and having a great season there. Brad Kennedy joining us on the Pit Electric Live Line, WCTI 12 Sports, and a resident Kansas City Chiefs fan. And Brett uh, saw the uh, Chiefs in the news today. The Chiefs, along with the Patriots, Bills, Titans, and Jaguars, will host international games during the 2023 regular season. And that, that always that, that bums me out if I'm a, uh, a fan and you lose a home game uh, to overseas. But uh, I don't know. How do you feel about it? The Chiefs will play a home game away from Arrowhead uh, next year. Yeah, I, I did see that. Uh, and that is a bummer because Arrowhead's one of the, the I mean, that, that's one of the most iconic places to play in the NFL, one of the best fan environments. And to lose a home game, uh, that is a bummer. But it is cool to show uh, your your brand of football overseas. The, 
I know the Chiefs played in Mexico a couple seasons ago, and uh, now it's cool to see um, them go over to Germany and um, to, to see that raucous environment that at the Germany game this past year is. It was awesome. Every, everybody, uh, everybody in the in the stands was singing John Denver, uh, <laughs> singing Country Roads. That was a, such an awesome environment to see. And um, I know a lot of fans uh, overseas; they're big Mahomes fans, Patrick Mahomes fans. And uh, it'll be fun to see uh, to see them play overseas in Germany. And I'm glad to see that they're adding more games over there because there are. There's a lot of, of American football fans over overseas, over in Europe. Um, so that, that that's going to be awesome to see. Brett, uh, let's go back to last weekend. So you're watching the playoffs as the Chiefs are relaxing, uh, getting ready for the divisional round. And you kind of knew, you know, if the Bengals took care of business Sunday night against the Ravens, which we all thought they would, that would set up a Bengals-Bills matchup. So you're basically kind of looking to see, all right, who's going to win the uh, the Jaguars and Chargers game, and you see the Chargers go up twenty seven nothing. A team, of course, you're very familiar with, and you see the Jaguars come back. I mean, are you are you trying? Are you picking an opponent during that game? Is there a team you wanted to see more than the other? And then, what about the outcome? It will be the Jaguars. What do you think about how uh, that all transpired? Well, to answer your first question, uh, I I was kind of bummed out because. I didn't want to play the Chargers. It's very hard to beat a team three times in the season. Um, and play two close games with them this year, right? Yeah, and yeah. two close games that were right down to the wire. And even in that game in Arrowhead earlier in the season, the Chargers looked like they were going to win that game until they threw a 98-yard pick six. Justin Herbert did. Um, so I was kind of bummed out. Going, man, well, the Chargers, they have those big receivers, Mike Williams. Had you have been been healthy this week, that would have been tough with him and Keenan Allen. But uh, yeah, the Jacksonville Jaguars, you got to give them credit. This was a team that was left for dead last season with Urban Meyer there, and Doug Peterson comes in having won a Super Bowl in Philadelphia, and he's totally changed the mentality of that team. Uh, Trevor Lawrence last season looked like a bust, or looked like uh, he was on his way to possibly becoming one, and now he has totally changed and done a complete 180. And this team looks scary. Um, but just uh, out of the two, I, I think the Chiefs matched up better with Jacksonville. It's still going to be a tough game. These two teams played earlier in the season <clears throat> back in Week 10. And uh, the Chiefs still came away with a victory at home uh, against the, uh, the Jaguars, 27-17. to But that game was close as well. This is going to be a very this – is, this is not going to be a cupcake match. As obviously, I mean, no, no playoff game is. But uh, this is going to be a much tougher matchup, I think, than people realize. They they play up tempo. The charge or the Jaguars do, and they've got those those. They they have really four, including Evan Ingram, ECU wide receiver Zay Jones is a force. Uh, you got Marvin Jones, you got Christian Kirk, and then you got Evan Ingram. You've got all four of those guys to worry about, as well as Travis Etienne coming out of the backfield. And um, this is a defense that that is that is spunky as well with with. Not not Bills quarterback Josh Allen, but their linebacker Josh Allen leading the way, and, uh, and that's a good defense to try to go up against. Uh, I'm 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 still con- I still think the Chiefs are going to come out of the winning end here, but this is going to be a, a dog fight right down to the wire. Looking forward to that one. I think Bills Bengals uh, sets up to be a great game as well. And on that other side of the bracket, Brett, you, you've got the Bengals who have had. Uh, the Chiefs number, and of course the the Buffalo Bills over there as well. So I don't know if you could pick your opponent for the AFC Championship, assuming the Chiefs get there. Who would you pick? Oh my God! <laughs> um, to be honest, looking and the outside looking in, I know the Chiefs got the one seed, but going into the playoffs, I did not see the Chiefs as the best team in the AFC. I, I saw the Bills and the Bengals yeah. ahead of the Chiefs in that regard, and I still think I still think that's the case. I think whoever the Chiefs play, if they make it to the AFC Championship game, they are going to have to play near perfect football to be either of those teams because you got the Bills who are coming in looking at last year's game going, man, if we would have just gotten that chance in overtime to get the ball, it might be a different story. And then you've got Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals who Patrick Mahomes and the, this Chiefs team has never beat. 
Um, so, and this is a team that also just came into the Arrowhead last year. Cincinnati did and beat them to go to the Super Bowl. So, oh my gosh, if I had to pick one, I would probably say Buffalo. As crazy as that sounds, yeah. and for Demar Hamlin, I would probably say Buffalo, just because the Chiefs have proven in a playoff type environment that they can beat Buffalo. I know the whole overtime rules people are going <laughs> to I, I just think that they match up a little bit better with Buffalo, yeah. as crazy as, as that sounds. I just think Cincinnati, the last couple seasons, has just had the, the Kansas City's number. Yeah, really just shows you how top-heavy that AFC is uh, with those three teams. Chiefs have to get by the Jaguars first. And then as you peek over to the NFC, Brett, it's the uh, NFC East Invitational, and the 49ers are crashing that party. But you've got the Giants and Eagles and uh, the Cowboys uh, crushing the Bucks the other night, taking on the 49ers. So who's the uh, the last man standing in the NFC? And I know you as a Washington fan are just sick to your stomach to see all three NFC East. It's pretty disgusting. Now, I'm a huge Niners fan right now, I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah, I mean – and you said it right there. That's my team that's coming out of the NFC. San Francisco is so good. So good. Even with Brock Purdy at quarterback, they are so loaded. Christian McCaffrey going to that offense is giving, like, Superman a pair of brass knuckles. <laughs> to change the vibe of that team. Uh, they, they, they've got a running attack now. And then the receivers, Devo Samuel, obviously, I mean, you – Need I say more about him? One of the best receivers, dynamic in the game. Brandon Ayuk has stepped up his game big time. George Kittle, right behind Travis Kelsey, is the best tight end in the league. Uh, this defense has some dogs. Fred Warner is a great middle linebacker. Uh, Nick Bosa, I mean, the, 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 the NFL sack leader, getting sacks left and right. Uh, this is a scary San Francisco team that I do not want to play right now. I know Philadelphia is tough. With Jalen Hurts coming back, is he will he be 100% healthy this weekend? We'll find out. But even if it's in Philly, I think this is the San Francisco team to win an NFC Championship game. They they just have they have the the the, the strength on the offensive and defensive side of the ball. Kyle Shanahan, they they just they they've got a group of guys there in San Fran. That is my team that's coming out of the NFC. Brett Kennedy joining us today on Pirate Radio Live, talking about his Chiefs, talking local sports. And, Brett, uh, if the Chiefs keep rolling on, we'll keep talking to you here leading up to the Super Bowl. You can hear all the playoff action right here on Pirate Radio, including Super Bowl 57. And, uh, Brett, it was great to catch up with you today, man. We'll keep in touch and, uh, and do it again soon. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, sounds good, Cliff. Uh, enjoy enjoy the rest of your week with some good basketball and uh, some really good playoff football. Good, good talking to you. Thank you, Brett. Brett Kennedy, WCTI 12, our resident Chiefs fan, checking in with us here on Pirate Radio Live. And Nice guy, Brett. Everybody gets along with Brett. Everybody's got to like Brett. Right, Chandler? Brett's a great guy. All right. I love Brett. I thought you might be trying to start a fake beef with Brett Kennedy. What makes you think that? We, I don't know. We need a good. We need a beef. Well, I don't want a beef with Brett. Somebody He's too nice of a guy. Talked about it on YouTube yesterday. They want to see Patrick Mason be a little more cutthroat. I think it's time to get a little more cutthroat around here. I'm not a cutthroat guy. I know. We need to pick out a guest we have on every week. Why would you want me to beef with Brett Kennedy? <laughs> that was so random. <laughs> Let's take a break. We'll come back. He's a great guy. Get ready to wrap up Pirate Radio Live after these words. This is Holt Nailers. I've been eating at Parker's Barbecue since I was a kid. Now, all these years later, I still love to eat at Parker's. In fact, I love it so much, I bring my entire offensive line with me. They protect me, and I look out for them with great food from Parker's Barbecue. So whether you bring the team like me or just your friends and family, the awesome barbecue, chicken, and seafood at Parker's is a win every time. Parker's Barbecue, where they always treat you like family. Hi, this is Jeff Charles, and welcome inside the booth. Some good news for the Pirate Club. That's next. 
Boy, D, he needs to uh, go sit over there in the corner and say a prayer to the good Lord that, that he's got all y'all working for him because he, he's got a good crew there. It's Pirate Radio Live with Clip Brock. Clip, he's like the wide world of sports. Chandler Honeycutt. Chandler, he's like y'all say, he's the rain man of ECU sports trivia. And Shirley Rhodes. Shirley, I can tell she's the glue that holds y'all all together. Pirate Radio Live, weekdays from 3 to 6, right here on Pirate Radio. The ECU Educational Foundation, better known as the Pirate Club, reached the highest fundraising record in one year. The Pirate Club raised $36,743,828, breaking the goal by $4 million. This just doesn't happen by accident. The Pirate Nation has really stepped up, and the Pirate Club staff has worked hard this year in securing those gifts. The Pirate Club has attracted new donors, and a special thanks to the Student Pirate Club. They've also turned out in record numbers, and they mean so much to the teams with their attendance at games. This year's record numbers are a good sign for Pirate Athletics in the future in these very challenging times. Come on back again next time, and we'll visit Inside the Booth. When it comes to hauling dirt, asphalt, or stone, you can trust the pros at First and Goal Hauling Incorporated. They have a fleet of dump trucks ready to get the job done. And best of all, it's owned and operated by ECU football alum Dakota Marshall. When you have a big job and you need it done right, count on First and Goal Hauling, where it's a touchdown every time. Keep up with Dakota Marshall and First and Goal Hauling by following them on Facebook today. While you're sleeping, our whole hogs are slow cooking over wood to create that bite that Eastern North Carolina is known for. I'm Sam Jones, and for more than three generations, my folks have been the torchbearers for what whole hog barbecue is supposed to be. At Sam Jones, you'll find plenty of smoke but no mirrors. Everything, and I mean everything, is made fresh daily, including our sides, sweets, and sauces. Come on over and see us at Sam Jones Barbecue, and I bet you'll be able to taste our passion in just one bite. Sam Jones Barbecue, Fire Tower Road. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is Scott Harris with REMAX Preferred Realty. I've been in Greenville over 25 years. I'm a proud graduate of ECU. If you're looking to buy or sell a home, then give me a call today and let me help make your real estate process fun and easy. I keep it simple and explain the process every step of the way. My goals are your goals. There are no long-term contracts, and you always deal with me from start to finish. The right home starts with the right agent. Call me, Scott Harris, at 347-1857. Go Pirates! Great food, great atmosphere, and great service is Atavola Market Cafe. Atavola is simply a restaurant that focuses on that, being a great restaurant. There's something for everyone at Atavola. The menu offers a variety of great choices like pastas, pizzas, sandwiches, soups, salads, and seasonal rotating selections. Lunch or dinner, Atavola is always the right call. Call ahead and get Atavola to go. Or stop by the bar for a drink with friends. It's simple. Come and eat at Atavola Market Cafe, Red Banks Road next to Food Lion, and AtavolaMarket.com. Atavola, pirates supporting pirates. Yo, ho, you're listening to Pirate Radio. You're listening to Hour 3 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by Bud Light, reminding Pirate fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. Bud Light, the official beer of the ECU Pirates and proudly distributed by Carolina Eagle Distributing since 1989. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Do you want to get rid of wrinkles, tighten and lift your skin, smooth your skin texture, erase veins and brow spots and get rid of unwanted hair? Are you interested in Botox or filler? Contact the licensed professionals at Beauty Bar Medi Spa on Red Banks Road in Greenville. Free consultations available by calling 752-1406 or visiting BeautyBarMediSpa.com. Enjoy your visit. Love your transformation. Now let's head back in to PRL. Here's Clip. All right. Keeping up with my pick of the day. I had two of them yesterday. And what a night, baby. You see UConn up 14 at halftime over Seton Hall. I didn't watch the rest. I just assume I won that one. Seton Hall came back and won by one. But hey, okay, Mr. Flex over here. Uh, West, uh, by God, Virginia did win at home. So, one and one last night on the picks. Nice. Not going to overthink it tonight. 
going with Maryland at home. Fear the turtle minus three against Michigan. One and two on the year. <laughs> one out of my last one because the West Virginia game came after the uh, Seton Hall finish last night. Right. This is how like pickers do their thing. <laughs> Please tell your computer to shut up. I'm playing name that sound. That was a commercial of sorts. Yes, it was. Uh, tonight on the Buccaneer Music Hall scoreboard presented by Da Buck. Da Buck. It's Thursday, so what uh, conferences are in action tonight, Chandler? Since you're a sports guy, you know this kind of stuff. What conference? Yeah. In college you know basketball? how some conferences, like, uh, well, I don't, there's some conferences you won't see on Thursday night. Uh, I guess Big Ten. Sure, Big Ten's playing tonight. Rutgers at Michigan State, Purdue at Minnesota. Also, uh, what other conference is featured on Thursday night? ACC. It's not, of course, but the one that is is. Big 12. No, I said the one that is. You're naming the ones that aren't. Name uh, the one that is. Oh, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. Uh, Pac-12. Yeah, exactly. You knew that. I, US, I, I, miss, I misheard you. Yeah, yeah. USC at Arizona, UCLA at Arizona State. Those are the top 25 games tonight. Also, a uh, little shout-out to charleston southern fau and uh, of course gonzaga gonzaga's at home at loyola marymount florida atlantic at utsa fau 17 and 1 6 and 1 in conference play and they uh, are a big road favorite tonight number 24 in the country and charleston 19 and 1 7 and 0 in league play they are uh, big time road favorites at monmouth tonight monmouth by the way 1 and 17 0 and 5 in league play they are struggling. Where's UTEP playing? Gary, is that you? It's me. Gary's back. Where's UTEP? <laughs> Where's UTEP? Ah, uh, let's see. If the Miners are in action tonight, Gary, I will. Let's tell go you. down. Well, Gary, they're playing FIU, and they're playing in El Paso. In El Paso. Well, you know it's in El Paso. What's that? Amongst all the, I can't say it. I got in trouble the last time I did. Thanks, Gary, for joining us. We will see you Friday, 3 o'clock, for an all-new edition of Pirate Radio Live. For Shirley Rhodes, Man of Chan, I'm Cliff Brock. We'll talk to you then. So long, everybody. Thanks for listening to Pirate Radio Live, an exclusive.